podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. Hey, Daddy. This is Dollar Beat. BoxingVoice.com. No matter what nobody say, man. Spirit, can't nobody fuck with me, man. You know, I can't be fucked with, you know. You know. Dollar D. Beyonce Productions. Whether you pay to see me win, mm. or you pay to see me lose, mm. you're gonna pay. Mm. Fuck it, the kids still gotta eat. I don't have to watch, mm. you know, true footage of a, a fighter. Mm. I mean, because I'm Floyd Mayweather, everybody gotta watch me. I knew eventually I was gonna have to fight Oscar Bowler. I feel like, um, I feel like he was straight up and down, no really no special effects. BoxingVoice.com How can Canelo have the biggest deal? Yo, your, your deal is for 300 million And I made, I made 350 million just in one fight And you're fighting on the app BoxingVoice.com I'm a king, okay? I eat a feast, but every time I eat, I eat a feast And when I get up from the table, I don't give a fuck who get the leftovers At the end of the day, follow my green print Boxing Boys Ain't no Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Thursday edition of the Boxing Voice Radio, where we preview and predict this weekend's fights. There are no fights, so we're just gonna talk a lot of shh, a lot of boxing to talk. We got a couple of topics to bounce around: Canelo, Saunders. But uh, a lot more details than just saying Canelo Saunders. Um, That fight might not be on the table for Billy Joe Saunders. We'll give you all the details. Then Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis. Pay-per-view. But it gets a little worse than just possibly being on pay-per-view. We'll give you the details of the price. Anthony Joshua. Cobret Pulev. Postponement, July 25th is the new date. We'll give you those details. Mikey Garcia, what should he do? His whole team wants him to move down. Should he stick around at 147 and try and wait for that Manny Pacquiao fight? Those are just our main four topics. We got plenty to discuss around here. So if you're interested, you know the number to call in. one 569 5241 Press 1 one time. Voice your opinion right here on the Voice of the People hotline. Don't forget you can add Nesta Gibbs on Skype as long as you're on that $5 level. Since it's Thursday, on my $5, where you at? Where you at? Nah, nah, you ain't. Where you at? Nah, where, no. My five dollars, make some noise. <laughs> nah, sorry, right, sorry. Right. I still fuck with y'all, even though y'all don't want to show your faces. Let's go on out too. What's All up, right. man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I just wanna say I still fuck with you. Stay focused. Stay working, my dad. Yeah, I still fuck with you. 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 I still fuck Yes, good evening, good evening, and I'm just going to say like this, damn, $80 pay-per-view on the zone, and the words of Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, he said, and I quote, rules, what rules? I understand I shall forfeit all rights and license and privileges, but rock and roll, et cetera, et cetera. There ain't no rules. So if the zone decide, decides to say $80 for Ryan Garcia versus Gavante Davis, then we got to pay, and I'm going to play because I'm going to watch. What up, though? It's me, Mario. I was dreaming when I wrote this. Forgive me if it goes astray. Y'all was watching that Dave Chappelle. Shout out Dave Chappelle. Hey, well, and Prince, too, obviously. But that's, man, them lyrics, bro. I feel them now more than ever. I feel them now more than ever. But we we, we going to chop it up like it's 1999. What up, Doomy? Cheers. Ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion that's ever been. There's no one can stop it. Lynch is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody who's like me. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their club. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense 
Crazy, you know, Canelo, Billy Saunders out of the quest all because of a stunt. Brian Garcia, Giovanni Davis, 80 mil. The zone paper. Are we getting that 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 carrot dangled in front of us? And this fight ain't really happening soon. Mikey Garcia should move back down. But we all knew that he was a little too small for these bigger guys at that weight. You know what I'm saying? No, got to go down. Got to go down, champ. Con- con- conquering your own arena, but anyway, what y'all think about this whole thing and uh, uh, Canelo and Billy Saunders? All right, yeah, Billy Joe Saunders, he says something outlandish, outlandish, and um, yeah, some your license can get pulled for doing the wrong thing and being a public fi- figure. And who wants to affiliate yourself themselves with you? What sponsors want to come up with that extra millions of dollars for? Corona or for <laughs> Hennessy with your name in front of it. If you talking about beating women, but wouldn't not- it be wouldn't it be sweet? Like you know, Canelo Alvarez beating the shit out of the you know it, quote unquote yeah. woman. Nah. It would be, but then guess who gets paid for that? And there's not enough marketing dollars to do that campaign. The campaign you're talking about is the entire world knowing that he's a woman beater or that he jokes around with women being in domestic violence and Canelo's the hero. Like, it's too much money to make the people aware. Whoever knows, knows, and what they're going to do is cut ties. Like, that's it. You fucked up your Willy Wonka yeah. ticket. You know, hey. Enrique opened up with Willy Wonka. Well, he don't got the golden ticket. He fucked that up. Nah, nah. let's pass it on to who at that point? Triple G. Triple G. I'm sure Hennessy, I'm sure Achievers, I'm sure DeWalt, I'm sure Home Depot, they happy to put their money behind somebody who does not beat on women or claim the joke about it. Check it out. Look, this is the this is the whole thing for me. I, I see at first I was like with Doomy, like uh initially when I thought about it, I was like, man, I would love to see Canelo just beat the hell out this dude, you know, beat the stupid out of him. But in all honesty, <laughs> I would rather it go down this way where he gets skipped out. You know why? Because that would happen in the NBA, the NFL, the MLB. And the one thing that boxing doesn't have is a unified body that really, you know, has, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, not control, but oversight. Universal rules? Oversight. Universal rules and oversight. There is no oversight in boxing. Not really. Not when you break it down on, on an actual level. Like a fair level, there's no oversight. The top guys get all the you know benefits, and they get oh you know they get to do whatever they want, and everybody else kind of falls in line. In this situation, you know this is what would happen. People would get suspended in the M- in the MLB in the NBA, right? Boxing needs to appear like it is a professional sport because it is a professional sport, and it needs uh, to appear like a professional business because it's big time business, and this is not you know what you get. This isn't a good look. Especially a Canelo fight. fight is big time business. And you know what? This, this, if it if it happens, let that be a lesson to everyone to act accordingly, especially when you got multi-million dollar deal on the line. I think it was rumored he was getting something like eight million. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't think that was too much, but that's only because I already had that 14 million number in my mind for Kovalev, who was way more accomplished than him. So I get the eight million. But like he blew the eight million. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I'm, Any, I'm not. Anybody I'm, got any idea how long uh, uh, Billy's got his license suspended for? What, you well, know, well, let's be clear. Degree? Let's be clear that the suspension is only in the UK by the BBC, British Boxing of, mm-hmm. uh, Control Board, or whatever, and it has nothing to do with Canelo. Like, if Canelo wanted to have him fight in Vegas, he's gonna get licensed in Las Vegas by Las Vegas Commission. But again, I, I, I believe it's the, 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 the. He's tainted right now. Writers will write. Yo, can you come back from this? Though? Yeah, like, yeah, he guys, can come you guys, back. You, guys, yeah, you like, can come back. He could come back, back, just look, not right now. Like, like, me, y'all think it's over, like this guy. No, 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 no. no, no. Look, even it's Mia so Khalifa, that. even hey. Mia Khalifa had had a, had had a job after her job. You know what I'm saying? So, so we forgive everything. We'll forgive in, almost anything. Okay, you know, we've forgiven plenty of boxers over time. But you got to be remorseful. And I'm sorry, you got to have some sort of public an- acknowledgement of a punishment and this punishment would be moving out and you know what sucks about this is that billy you know bj saunders was the guy who accepted the fight when everybody else was trying to you know haggle and negotiate he was doing what nest loves guys to do and that's take the risk 
and, you know, try to win, try to win the fight. And, and, and that's what, and I loved it. I applauded Saunders. So this is what hurts so much more about this situation is that he started out this promotion, I guess we'll call it, uh, in such a such a grand fashion, in by comparison to everybody else, you know what I mean. He, he I, mean, I don't want to say he earned the fight in that kind of sense, but you know he deserved the fight. He definitely, he, took it. he definitely he got off on the right foot by yes. doing what Andre Charlo Dervinchenko did not do. Now, obviously, he had more right to do it than Dervinchenko because you know his was eight, Dervinchenko was five point five. But again, and uh, if you look at it. As a whole, Dervichenko doesn't deserve it. He never won a world title. He never been a two time champion. So, you know, Billy Billy was doing what he had to do. He just plays too much. We've all seen him play. If you follow him on on social media, you you see him play. And, and, and the problem with that is that this cannot be labeled or categorized as him playing or joking because you should know better. Not just because you're an adult, but because you're a public figure that's a fucking adult. You should know better. So, you know, if, if losing the Canelo fight is the punishment, it's the consequences, so be it. Yeah. Um, the consequence should be correct because, again, when, I mean, as we discussed today, like, yo, where does the step aside money come from? You said a sponsor. Now, does a sponsor and Canelo and Golden I mean, it Boy, could be the promoter, too. All, all they got to do is yeah. hammer the numbers out, think about yeah, tickets but, and all but, that stuff. But are they like, no, well, not that part. I'm just saying, like, people that step in, corporations, outside worlds, vendors that come in and say, damn, do I support somebody who claims to be joking about beating women while there are, this is a dominant uh, masculine sport where men do have rage and possibly may listen to this guy? You know, has has Billy even came out and done like a, a public speech or he apologized? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah he, but, He's but already the, publicly apologized and uh, like spoke on it, like spoke on it in video. Yeah, 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 yeah no, yeah. he's on a video. Actually, man, I'm so sorry, Ness. I meant to send that to you because it was clipped perfectly. Uh, man, I don't even remember what website. And and basically, he said it was a joke. He was trying to lighten the mood uh, of the current tensions going on with Corona. And, Bruh, and even like, the, that's even what the I'm interviewer saying, asked, though. "Do you that... think anyone laughed at it? Do you think anyone exactly. laughed at it?" And he was like, "Obviously not." And yeah, obviously not. Yeah, but my thing is, like, what circles do you hang in? What friends do you have that you sit around and joke about a man beating a woman? And I'm not one of those dudes. I don't want to come off that way either. That, like, I'm, I'm, pro, I'm like, you know, this big activist for, you know what for I, domestic you know violence. What I, you, it's just I, I don't just, get it. I don't get the lie. Like, Bro, take it on the chin. It, you fucked up. You fucked up. Don't lie now and say listen, you thought it was Ness, a joke. Ness, you know, you know, you've been around people that their humor is not your humor. You know that some people have like outrageous humor, and it's like, it's. I'm not giving him an excuse for acting the way he's acting, said what he said, or even the joke. It's like, but there's there's people that just have a different side of sense of humor, and uh, he was trying to entertain what might maybe he would have said to his friends around him who are around him immediately and then he thought that he would put this on social media and get the same reaction as he does from his friends you're, you're absolutely and right backfired the shit out of him so, he, here's here's my problem with I that think statement Billy though Saunders is a woman beater no 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 of course not I, look look no, this is not. this was a joke it, it was a poor joke it was a stupid joke but it, he was trying to be funny. At least, here's the thing. That's what my hope is. Obviously, I don't know the man very well. But but uh, where's at all, the actually. humor? Like, but, like yo, why y'all keep saying he's trying to be funny? It was a joke. Did he did he punch the bag and fall off his feet? And did he look like a clown with a red nose? Like he punched the bag with full force. He told you if your if your spouse yeah. is running to you, hit her with the right and counter so with the saying, left hook. So you're it's no that, fucking right, so joke, bro. That if he would have hit the bag softer, it would have been okay. My no, friend, no, he's my friend, what no I'm trying line. to say, no what I'm line. trying to say, there was no joke, and we need to stop using the word joke to try to lighten the move for him. Okay, but here's what you're missing, though. Okay, there, th this is a thing. This is what people look. Y'all know Ari Shafir, the the comedian. Right after the day after the day that. Uh, Kobe died. You know, he's like a big Celtics fan or something. Somebody that the Lakers play. The, yeah, the I, I saw that. I saw and that. And he man, said right? something. You saw that, that, right? And he just shitted on Kobe. Bruh, but he's he was a like, full I'm glad blown. Bro, he's, he's a. a it's it different. A, exactly. He's, he's a comedian. He he's a comedian. 
He's a exactly. comedian. That was he at least has make. an he's angle. This guy's a boxer, bro. But this oh, so because he's a comedian. No, he you didn't listen to him. He said he still got shit on. Like how 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 much of a cringe is that joke? Is too too soon. And how much is that cringe from Team Sounder, uh, Sal, 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 Sounders? Saunders, Saunders, got, Saunders, yeah. Saunders. How much people in his publicity camp is uh and his his publicist cringing right now? Like, oh, how do we fix this? Funny at all. Yeah, yeah bro, he don't got no publicists. How much money did we lose behind this silly ass exactly. comment of? Punching somebody in the face. That's but is a that enough of a punishment? And let me tell you something. Let me nah, tell you something. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all need to think about this. Is he, is, he, is, he, is he looking for a way out? This is the second fight on the elite level that he finds a way to get himself took out of. First fight, he took nasal spray. This fight, he fake beating women on internet. Like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he don't want to fight certain people. That's an angle, but it still taints his name. about that, but... I mean, for him to be that freaking the, uh, I don't know. I mean, why you don't have to fight. fight. You don't have to take the fight. If you don't want the fight, you don't fight. You know exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I don't, don't think. Have, I don't. don't I don't think. He sh- exactly. So why I don't sabotage think he's it? For a way out because he doesn't have to make that joke. He doesn't so why have to sabotage do these, it? Then? I mean, he doesn't have to take that fight. So why sabotage the fight then? I I think, bro. Listen, we have enough evidence to that suggests that this man has some sort of uh, very. Tr- yeah, some sort of twisted view on society and and the way that he is perceived and 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 his power as a a, a well known athlete. You know what I mean? It's just he doesn't get it. He does not get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do we think of of, of Billy Saunders before this? I mean, what did yo, you think? I, I, listen, you want to talk about like the 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 legacy of him? That's different. But what did I think before this? I thought, yo, he stepped up to get the fight. Applaud that man. Is he gonna beat Canelo? No. You know, is he the guy that I wanted to see against Canelo? Not not number one, or probably not even number two, but he was up there enough that I enjoy the th- what was going on with this fight. The fact that all these guys were offered and all of them were playing around with the numbers, but here comes BJ Saunders. So it was to me, I, I, it was a good look. It was a good look. And and it was a way to build a storyline around the fight that that could have easily gone into the promotion, and you know they would have been shitting on everybody. It would have been great, but this just taints it all, and and it might even taint his entire legacy at this point. Crazy because like, no way, him, no way. Him and his friend, him and his friend are now no license in the UK. No way that it taints the entire Tyson legacy. Fury but and, listen, and listen, the... let's just add more fuel to the fire because I don't want nobody trying to give him a pass, right? Like, this mm-hmm. is the same dude, right, that in the middle of the pandemic with the coronavirus is taking a flight with three friends, Josh Teller and another fighter and himself. He gets off or, or goes in front of them and tells the flight attendant that one of them have coronavirus. That's oh, this, damn. That is th- ridiculous. Listen, so then the dude doesn't get to get on a plane. They treat him like he really got coronavirus. They don't take it as no joke. His flight's delayed. He all of all the dumb shit that go go with that, and and Billy's laughing. Like this is what I'm saying. Yo, like, and, and he's and crazy. that's the thing too is because he doesn't even understand that that's going on right now. There are people that I read I read a couple of stories already that there are people that have gone out of their way to hide their diagnosis because they don't want to be quarantined because they don't want to be out for two weeks because they have families or they have other people and they're not telling people because they don't have symptoms so that's a real thing and you cannot joke about that like that's not something that's like going into a building crowded with people and yelling fire you cannot do that you know what I'm saying that alone should have been a, a criminal prosecution just That's when I mean, look, right now people are a little scared, you know. So for you to just point someone out and say he got the corona is crazy. But we're gonna slide in some news and notes before we move to the next topic. Since we brought Wait, up Ness, real quick, I just I just Googled just for the hell of it, like the difference between UK humor and American humor. And UK humor is quoted here, we avoid sincerity until it's absolutely necessary. We are mercilessly take the piss out of out of people we like or dislike, basically, and ourselves. And that is our brashness and swagger is landing with equal position portions of self deprecate deprecation. This is our license to hand it out. So he's basically not he's being sincere. 
So what you saying? He really out there rocking? Chicks? So what you saying nah, that he's man. come on, man? He's hit he's a few girlfriends too. before. He's knocked them come around. That's what you're trying to insinuate. Bro, pop, yeah, it's like not possible. It bro. says here that you. Yeah, uh, that's American, a delicate subject, bro. If you ain't bro, got no heart, Americans. Right, yo, I'm I'm just giving my opinion based oh, off of this God. difference God. between humor. It's it says Americans are told they can be presidents. UK, United Kingdom, Brits are not told that. They have to prove it. Yo, it's that there's always been a black cloud revolving around uh Billy And then Man. think about how factual it is. How I mean, Tyson Fury that hasn't gone that outlandish, that far reach, but he's been outlandish. He's been having, you know, jokes about his penis, right? Yeah. All right. Tyson and Fury up, too? Not about beating women or anything like that, but about like stroking his meat. Oh, yeah, the masturbation co- uh, interview. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Well, listen, while, while we're talking the coronavirus, uh, sadly, we've learned that DAZN executive John Skipper has tested positive for COVID-19, but he has fully recovered. Uh, that's part of the news and notes that, uh, you know, we were going to get to. That's, um, that's you know, part not of the much conspiracy, to though, man. Why is it always the rich people motherfucking recovering? Yeah, you know, public listen, figures. Either way, public figures yeah. get diagnosed, they get tested, they get they're you know, the positive, and then they're negative. On the president was just on TV talking about how he took a coronavirus test and got his – he said, I went back to work and I got my results 14 minutes later. It, now, it he felt was like talking a about stunt. the new testing, the new testing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and I understood that, but it just felt like a stunt. Like, it, it just, you know what I'm saying? But but that's like the whole problem with this thing is uh, celebrities have gotten – Treatment Did you see that firsthand. video I sent you on how to get tested? How yeah, 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 yeah. I actually, real? yeah, yeah. That's how they tested me for the flu uh, during the uh, during the Christmas break. Uh, I was kind of sick. Yeah, fuck, it hurt too, bro. It hurt. And and then on top of that, yo, I have really sensitive allergies. So when she did it, yo, I sneezed so much snot all over her and on the <laughs> floor. I was like apologetic as hell but yo i was shocked i didn't know that's how they test you for flu she grabbed that thing stuck it way up my no, nose that's how like, they that's the? how they infect you with the flu that's oh shit that's how they, oh, no. that's that's they, they saying you, you 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 went over there to get treated they hit you with the buggy yeah but that's the hood conspiracy theorists yo they have my flu test uh Bruh. ready i mean they have my flu uh results test in like within an hour so you know what i'm saying i was in and out that month yo idris elba the only black celebrity to test positive nah uh-huh. tom hanks tom hanks tested positive hey, he ain't uh, black what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what did <laughs> yeah, what? idris elba was the only black, black. oh i'm sorry i thought you, I thought you said the only celebrity My yeah, yo. Tom hanks. <laughs> Wait, there was some basketball players that um tested positive as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who, who? Uh, Durant, you Durant, you Nets players. Durant. Yeah, Durant. Even though he's he wasn't playing, he's hurt. But yeah, a bunch of Nets players tested positive, wow. and uh, Denver. I can't remember honestly. Kevin Durant, he tested positive. Yeah, Kevin Durant definitely tested positive, but he wasn't playing at the time. I mean, he was yeah, on the bench. Was saying, Ness was asking if black people test positive. Oh, got it. Other got than it. Idris. Well, that's the other problem, too, is that, you know, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, black people, they are so predis- predispositioned to certain illnesses, you know what I mean? And and those illnesses, I mean, it, it's a death sentence for people, you know what I mean? Like, uh, most people that are dying had something wrong with them, uh, you know, already. Uh, what are they called? Pre- uh, Damn it, I forgot what it's called. You know, pre existing like medical. Yes, pre existing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, you know, it's these people that that are the most at risk. You know what I'm saying? So if you're a healthy person and you're like, well, I'm healthy, I eat great, you know what I mean? And you're out there doing stuff, like, no, you're a that's that's BS, bro, because you could be cut carrying it and pass it on unknowingly to somebody who has diabetes or cancer or something, you know what I mean? And and that's a death sentence for them. So word. I, but, I uh, but we can yeah, move man. on. Yeah, man. So now you know, you oh, know the humor. The humor of UK is different. They're more bashful than the Americans. So it is a sensitive topic, do me. But that's the reason why you don't say shit like that because it is a sensitive topic, especially in 2020. No women, women are stepping up. You know, women are in power. Women control right. shit now. In, o- in order for that thing that call happened funny, du- something, call me else, the double book. something else was supposed to be in that element. He did, He he made it look serious, and he's an idiot, and he's done a lot of stupid shit, so it's nothing new. He could have uh, used a burglar or somebody. I, 
No, nah, I just hope. Yeah, I just hope he that, that, that somebody that. sneeze on me. Blah, 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 this happens. I mean, genuinely, you know what I'm saying. I don't think he's a woman beater or anything like that or that sort. I just think that he's he's he pulled an idiot move. So thinking you, it was you funny. would want your name affiliated with him if you were a hundred million dollar corporation. I'm not. See, I'm not a judge. You know, I'm, I'm always. I'm the type of guy. You know what I'm saying. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. You know, I forgive you. It's not like I caught him beating on a woman on a video or anything like that. Because if it would have been something like that, I would have had nothing. Nothing to do with him. Um, it was a fucking bad joke. And he got punished for it, and you know we ain't he gonna see punished for it. Yeah, he he got punished for it, so yeah. we ain't gonna see we ain't gonna see him no more for a little while boxing out there unless they bring it to you know the U.S. survey like Mister Ness said. I, I, I don't get why so, y'all so soft on him, bro. Like my man, my man literally put himself on IG the last time, and he you know is recording a fiend, tricks the fiend into believing that he has some sort of uh you know pleasures my boy my boy must have grew up in a very crazy environment no it's not even growing up listen it's not even growing yeah he keep finding excuse dude this dude right here like it's not an excuse yes you are it's obviously that's that's something that anybody would think like what the fuck makes you up usually is how you grow up and what's you've been you know you've been exposed to so it's like i'm not Jumping out the window with so what? Right. Listen, to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. That makes him talk about beating we, women. We do that. No, in the, in the I'm city. not even talking about the beating women. Just the one that's, me, that's mentioned, like him, like fucking with the crackhead and all this, doing this like stupid shit. Like, bro, yo, you don't just mess with a crackhead, bro. Like, you don't like, just do that. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You, yo, you don't just, yes, do, especially, you know, you know especially not rich. Hood, bro. No yo, like, stop like saying no- that. He ain't from the fucking hood. He got two Bentleys, man. He a fucking public figure. Well, he always had them Bentleys then. Oh man. Oh, so next. Oh man. And this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> when you on this level, you can't be who you was. You're not allowed. You're not Bro, allowed. Yeah, a lot of people figured that out. You the got hard people. Way. You I got people this looking up to you. He's figuring that out the hard way. Bro, this is this is this there was is, more on the line now than ever before. This is infraction oh, after infraction. Be- First, his kid punches Willie Monroe in the dick. Oh, so he knew what he he told so. He, he told uh, his son to punch him in the dick. That's what you're saying, brother. If his son, his son you're only did, hold him, man. his Canada son only up. did what he seen his father do. That's Yo, it. So I'm that's it. Living. That's it. What living. he saw has an effect, and somehow, what the fuck he be acting how sometimes, man. It's gonna Tell affect him dogs, over here, right? I mean, you have dogs, right? Oh uh, yeah, I got two. All right. Have you ever heard the expression "your dogs are as hostile as you are"? Never. Never? All right. Yeah, do me, truth, do me do videos. Got, do me do videos beating his dogs. <laughs> do videos beating his dogs? Yeah. The hell are you talking about? Uh, I'm, I'm giving you the same fucking uh, cliche as motherfucking uh, Billy Joe, you know? Let, make some and excuses for yourself. You Bro, know, because everything you, 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 everything make no you say right now. Everything you say about Billy Joe is another excuse, bro. Ah, bro. I, what I'm saying is and that not even Broner. Not people even Broner mistakes. has done as much as this dude. Bro, he ain't beat on nobody. He made a stupid move. What I'm saying is that everybody in this game, bro, not everybody, but a lot of fighters have made mistakes. Bro, so you, you crucify you, you, you crucifying him. I'm extra, crucifying extra, him. Extra, I'm extra crucifying because you're trying to come off somewhere. No, somehow. I'm crucifying him for this particular reason. We on quarantine, which means. A, 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 a defenseless woman who otherwise would at least uh, escape for eight hours to her job, you know, not to be abused for 24 hours a day. Now she's in the house with her domestic abuser. Women, ab- women abuse is not anything to play around with. Exactly. You so think, you think so stop, all of a so because, stop looking for another really like, light to put video. it under. All the women beaters out there are really going to go and try this combo. Come on, No, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not, saying. that's not what I'm saying is you can't be telling someone this is what you do during quarantine if you're having a fight with your, your partner when in reality, because of the quarantine, there is a rise in domestic violence. Have you Googled yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, you yeah, haven't. Yeah. No, you haven't because well, you're just defending. I, I well, I don't know about that, and I don't think Billy Sanders Because you don't do research. You don't do research. That's, I do you, do research. You're not you getting it. You're not getting it. 
He isn't responsible. The time that we are in is responsible. So because women are confound to their house, they are getting abused more. Don't you get it? They're in the house with their abuser 24 hours, and you got my man over here who's a rich guy who should be a role model that, or just keep his mouth shut. You knew nothing about that information until after this video. So don't act like you knew about this. Knew about what? About women's uh, uh, being beat. You didn't know nothing about that. Those about the rise in domestic yeah, violence. Yeah, you my, didn't know nothing about that until after you Coronavirus just started. We just got placed in fucking quarantine, silly yeah, Billy. You can make sense of it on air now, but you didn't. But, you but, were all right, both all right. Of uh, both of y'all are saying that both of y'all are saying that this man deserves to have the fight taken away. Both of y'all are saying that he Doomie, should be held accountable for your actions. All Doomie, Doomie is saying, is saying is that, that he's a hundred percent sure he's not a woman beater. After. That's what he's saying. That's what he said already. That ax him. Ask him because he you, asked you the you question. Think, he asked one of us not, the question. He, he asked me. Are you 100% sure that he's not a woman beater? Well, listen, 100% is pretty big, bro. Nobody could exactly. say that in their life. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm going to tell you that I'm, I'm pretty sure, bro. You, don't act like you guys haven't seen uh, Billy Sander interviews, bro. Look, I've don't, act, don't act like you don't know. That's, don't, act like, don't act like you don't like you haven't interviewed him, bro. Like He just, he's a fuck. I don't know. Who, he who, got who? the UK humor. Brother, you just making or, or, excuses. Or, or, he was, or he was so fucking 34 boring. minutes of excuses. Yeah. Yo, but what if somebody was like, yo, this is how you rape a woman? How would you feel about that? Bruh, don't even go there because my man is not looking at it logically. Like, he's looking at it from, let's find the best excuse. Which one fits? He's no, playing fucking Legos I think what he's saying Legos is the same thing something. you said, that, that this shouldn't define his career. You said that this isn't going to ruin his legacy. I said it's and not going to ruin what Dumi's saying is that he should at some point get another chance. And yes, he will at some point get another chance. Everybody gets redemption. Is the other this, chance you know against Canelo or is the no. other chance just a regular fight? Nah, he got to start all over, homeboy. Yeah, I'm he's sorry. Have to go to the to me, I mean, he he's a titleist, though, so he won't get a Canelo. Yeah. He'll just get something else. Yeah, yeah. He'll, 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 listen, get, he'll, get, he'll get that kid. At the highest level. He'll get, he'll get that kid, Callum Smith, in Anfield. Or, or he goes into depression and retires and doesn't See, even I think make weight. No, bro, that else I, at this point, I think that everything he's done and you stack it up like i'm not saying he's not feeling this or this isn't going to hurt cuz this there was more on the line now than ever before but it, clearly i don't know the man it, uh, look i would say that there's less of a chance of that happening and more of a chance that he does something stupid again honestly and maybe i just want to believe that cuz i don't want him to be depressed Ooh. i don't want him to commit suicide i don't want him to do anything Ooh. you know Ooh. Nobody does. yo no, no, double, double standard double standard why y'all wasn't acting like this when when Javante davis put his girlfriend in the headlock on basketball weekend mm. do me do me why you ain't make excuses for him oh my god didn't i explain myself what? I told you, it's not like I saw Billy Saunders put his hands on a woman. It's different when you put hands on a woman, uh -huh. bro. He did say that. Uh -huh. yeah, he said that. It's different. Right. You see, look, you see Ray Rice kick the shit out of his girl, and you want to beat the shit out of Ray Rice. George you know Foster. What I'm you oh, see hell, see, that shit, that stuff. shit right there, I, I don't even know how he, like, is he still playing for the George nah, Foster. Hell, hell hold on, nah, hold on. George playing. Foster in the chat, this is America, so Javonta will have a punishment. This is not the UK where... All you got to do is make a fucking IG video apologizing. Javonta, Javonta, Javonta was arrested like and charged, and he's going to right. court. So exactly. there will be some sort of but, punishment. But, 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 but I could make so that same video, it. and nobody's going to arrest me. All right, nobody's going to arrest you for everybody that. Talking, I, I, there's a pattern going on. Everybody, I fell back. There's a whole bunch of people talking. I fall back. What I'm trying to say right now is Gavanta did it in public. Yes, he got arrested. I don't know if he would punch a bag and say something, how it would affect him, but it would affect him because of his following. It would affect his, his him tainting not only his name, but the name of boxing if they then reward him with a big-ass fight. So that is the reason why boxing is like, eh, you ain't getting the big fight. You know, yes, he got publicists. Yes, they know how to, what's it, when they clean your name up? What's it called that? Expungement. Mm. Damage control? Damage control. Yes, control. he got people, I'm sure, that would control damage and sweep it all under the rug and have him redeem himself, apologize, public figure, do things for the community to then come back. But Billy Joe, he got to do that right now to come back to just get a regular fight in the United Kingdom. Listen, I think at, at the well, end of the day, 
he deserves whatever punishments come his way and probably even more because nothing else other than him losing the Canelo fight is probably going to happen. Um, and so, but he'll get his chance again to redeem himself. It might be in a year, it might be in two years, uh, but he needs to take this and he needs to seriously look at it. But um, listen, I, I think if we uh, are still waiting on our guests, maybe we move on to uh, topic two, yeah, Ryan yeah, Garcia. Yeah, yeah, David, yeah. Uh, David hit me up. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jose Sr. hit me up. He said they need a couple minutes. Uh, so we're not scheduled for Terrell Gishit until 830, so we're good. Um, but yeah, let's get into the next topic. So uh, Ryan Garcia uh, has uh, made a comment, and and, he, and okay, I'll, I'll put out the whole thing. So uh, Ryan Garcia believes that a fight between him and Javante Davis should be an eighty dollar pay per view on DAZN. Now understand that DAZN is a paid premium subscription. So you would be paying for your subscription. So you're going to pay for the right to buy the pay-per-view. I mean, um, it's easier to just say he wants to do exactly what Bob Arum and Top Rank and and Terrence Crawford did. Yeah. So you, what pay, you said, pay for the five ninety nine ESPN, and you had to pay for the pay-per-view. Yeah. So you it's not do that, that for UFC too. It's not that big a difference, you know. Um, it's well, I, just I, against the mission statement of the zone. Exactly. When they came out, they said pay-per-view is dead. You know, we don't believe in the pay-per-view model. So if they change to eighty dollars for one fight, then something's a pro you know, there's a problem. And so, real quick, the quote is this: uh, Ryan Garcia told Fight Hype, "Let's do seventy-five, eighty-dollar pay-per-view on DAZN. It's still a pay-per-view, and it's still DAZN. So let's get it. First, you win subscriptions, then you win with pay-per-view, and you have." Two of the best of the world. Don't deny it. If you deny it, then you just effed up the money. You ain't never met anyone like me. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Do I me. just want to get in. I just want to get in and say that um, this is like pricing yourself out at, at, at its best. Exactly. There's no way. Oh there's no God. way you're gonna exactly. tell the That's bigger. Exactly what I was gonna say. There's no way you're gonna tell the bigger star, the more accomplished star, the more accomplished <laughs> fighter uh, that he has to fight on your network. <laughs> and help you yeah. get subscriptions for his network, uh, I, and don't 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 do it because then you'll be a chicken somehow. What the? I fuck? mean, let, I mean, let's break it down, right? Because you know, I mean, I'm loving Ryan Garcia's uh, 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 you know confidence and all that. But uh, good points you make is that yeah, Tank Davis more accomplished, been there a little longer at the top. Um, but like Ryan Garcia is a star too, right? Social media, all that stuff. Maybe he's feeling and him and Golden Boy that like. They hold more, they hold a better hand on that side. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, that's where all this uh, confidence is coming from. You a know, better I think, hand. I, what kind I of hand? Is that an eighty dollar pay per view to you, Enrique? Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, if you ask it. me, yeah, I pay for it. But I think that again, if it goes against the mission statement, it is like, uh, damn, dog, I gotta pay eighty dollars yeah. to get you the fifty million dollar payday. Listen, so. It's called. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Let me say something, though. I just think he's speaking from an egotistical view. A lot of people are gassing him up that yeah. he's a star. He's a star. But, you know, he's the weaker link when you name the three fighters uh, Gavante Davis, David Haney, and Ryan Garcia. He's the weakest of the three. Tiafimo Lopez, Vasil Lomachenko, he all the way at the bottom. He all the way at the bottom. All he has is a little the, more celebrity yeah. than them. Popularity. On Popularity, Popularity is what he got. Um, but you know, Look, I, uh, he hasn't won the world title to be dictating and, and, and telling the A side to come over to the B sides network. Um, and I'm going to say yes to your question. The, the pay-per-view is worth it. It is worth $80 because we going to pay $79.95 for Tank versus Leo. We just pay $79.95 for fucking, uh, Fury Wilder, like, that's just the going rate in America of pay-per-view. Like, we haven't seen a 59 pay-per-view or a 49 or... Like, people need to stop dreaming that right. because fighters but, are young or they're not Floyd. Now, the paper, correct they, me because... No you, one lowers you know, the market. They're not going to take money out their pocket. Uh, all right, correct me. You, you say you know the business of boxing. So, that number, $80, right, or $79.99, is so that that $23 million purse can happen, is it or is it not? Because on subscription alone, our pay towards it doesn't give them that big-ass purse. Am I wrong or am I right? I mean, you know, yes and no, you know, because yeah. every business is different, right? Like, they, they could get 
site fee money. They could get broadcaster money. They could get sponsorship money. It's just so much money that comes in for a fight of this magnitude. When you're talking Garcia and Javante, you know, they're going to shop it around. Who's going right. to want it? Does Atlanta want to be a player? Do they want Javante back? Is it going to be uh, StubHub in L.A.? Do they want Ryan over there? Like, is Vegas going to say, no, this is a pay-per-view. We want that. Oh, this is going to bring us that, people. That's, that's the biggest problem right there. Here's what we're all, all, all missing. We're all talking about the business side of this thing, okay? But this is what hit me the weirdest with this is Ryan Garcia, he's got a lot of potential and he's got a lot of potential to be the figurehead of the uh, Mexican fan base, right? He, he really could uh, come out of this like that. The one thing I feel this does is it puts him in a light and, and maybe I'm wrong. It puts him in a light where, where it feels like you know, it's demanding money from the fans. Like people aren't going to, I think, respond to this the way that he thinks they are. You know, you're talking about Mexican fans that that can't always afford a pay-per-view that, that you know, can't afford a or couldn't afford HBO back in the day and can't afford Showtime right now. And you know what I'm saying? Like to me, it's like he's he's not turning his back on the fan base or anything like that. But but it's just a bad look like I, I, this is the type of thing that you handle behind closed doors. You know what I mean? I think the one thing that De La Hoya and a lot of the Mexican uh, superstars that came before Ryan Garcia benefited from is not having Twitter, not having Instagram. So things like this were never said out loud. These are the things that happen in the background. Ryan Garcia making this stuff public. It, it really does not. um appeal to the fan base at least in my opinion maybe i'm looking at it wrong and, and obviously does. we have other mexican I think, fans i think you're looking at it wrong like i said that's the going rate so how is he saying like he's not saying a curse word again you're thinking about it from the business side of it like that makes sense but from the uh what's the word like uh like um you know from, from that yeah like from the fan standpoint for from his personal profile from his public profile it, it's the wrong move to come out and say something like Bruh, this like fans, you're gonna demand no, subscription money I and then you want to demand a pay-per-view for a disown company that that you know said they wouldn't do that Bruh, I mean, I don't, bruh, I don't think bruh, bruh. fans know they got to pay for pay-per-view. Man. Yeah, that's what I was sure. about to say. There's nothing wrong with him coming out that confident. Listen, man, like I said, he feels confident and let's not let's not get it twisted, man. This fight is going to be what we want it to be. It's going to be exciting. We're going to be anticipating it. We want to know who's going to be the new young man, gun of the future. He I don't believe him, bro. I don't believe him. If, 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 if he wanted tank, why not take Haney? He's on he your side. Haney for last. Maybe, maybe Haney, side. maybe Haney, maybe tank is the bigger name. I don't know, but tank, Haney, I would take tank, tank is the bigger name. Tank is the bigger name, but there is no, there's no red tape with with Haney. There's no oh eighty dollars pay per view. Come on, my right. side. Talk how to much, Ellaby. How, how much does uh, social media influence? First in this, of all, guys? first of all, let's not forget what Lena Ellaby said. A ton. Let's not forget what Lena Ellaby said. Who is in charge of Javante's career? You can't send the A side no offer. Yo, so let me tell you, Ryan Garcia's yeah, five point seven million followers on IG, and Javante's two point one million. No, we know that that we we already knew it's Ryan was a big. How much, does, how much does that weigh in? You know, and, and for him, for him, uh, you know, going going. Well, that you know, that's going to be the ultimate test. If he really gets on pay per view, he'll see just how big of a following he got and who's going to pay. Yeah, well, in his mind, that might mean everything. Some of those followers might be like, you know, 17 year old, 18 year old girls. Yeah, but they still going to get their mommy to pay. They might get their boyfriend to pay, but, you know, it's still a fraction of them that might, and then there's a fraction that won't. I, I so, definitely think I, you're wrong, man. You know, being in the YouTube world, you get to see, you know, other content creators who so create. I'm saying each and individually. I'm saying, let me finish so you can hear what I'm saying. Being in the YouTube world, you know, you see other content creators that create content for kids and you see the super chats that those creators get. Moms give the kids the iPad, but somehow they super chatting for the creator. 500, yeah, okay. 100. That ain't no kid. That's a grown up that has to put that's it in. That's somebody. That's something. I know. I never because did that. Because I have a so. daughter and, 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 you know, I get a notification. So she can't do nothing without, you know, me. So yeah, I don't know. I you. Well, I'm going to go to this, right? I think the pay-per-view tag on the zone technically is like a GoFundMe link uh, projected off the potential buys that I did last time in viewership. Mm, that's a very unique so way of looking at it. It ain't saying let's go GoFundMe, but it's like, yo, if my last views did this and we face Gavante, 
his views do that combined well then go fund me on pay-per-view yeah you know i i I, that's a unique perspective i don't know if i fully agree with it or not but but i i never looked at it that way but i I, here's a at the end of the day this is the issue with this look I've ordered UFC pay-per-views and I've been at houses where people are going to order UFC pay-per-views on, on ESPN plus. It is not the easiest thing to do. It's not as easy as DAZN, you know, putting on an app and the transactions. And then if you have to stream it from your phone and if you don't have a smart TV and it's just, this is not like, it, it's already complicated enough for a lot of, uh, boxing, older boxing heads to, Bruh, to, I think to you're... successfully get to zone off, I but think... now to do that and then have to order a pay-per-view. Uh, I don't know. I think that's a weak argument. Like, first of all, <laughs> if you got the zone, you already know how to stream from your phone to your TV mm-hmm. and all that no, shit. No, bro. And, I, I, I think and, 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 and in-app, that. hold, hold on. on, I'm not done and my hand is up, champ. In-app purchases, you the main one talking about, yo, we talking, I fall back. You ain't falling back today. Nah, but listen, back. I thought you were done. You pulled, in-app but purchases are like, that's the upsell for apps. That's why apps are so popular because they got in-app purchases. You're going to tell me that, I understand that you got the app and you don't know how to buy something from within the app? Get that crazy excuse out of here. All right. Bro, but like, but like, I, yo, I, yeah, go, I see. Go, go ahead. He got yeah, the scepter. Go ahead. He got the scepter. He got the scepter. All right, look, I, I, would, I would almost agree with you, Mario, but I disagree yo. because nowadays, hold who on, has on, a full on, three on. television? We got <laughs> we got David and old Hey, I'm sorry, <laughs> Damn, man, that shit don't sound right. Hey, how, how you doing, David? Thank you for joining us on The Boxing Voice. How you doing today? Hey, hey what's up, guys? It's Jose Benavides Sr., the father of David Benavides. How, how you guys doing? How you doing, Jose? Good. Sorry about that. No, no worries, man. Thank you so much for inviting us to your show, guys. Thank you, man, for taking out the time and coming on and uh, just talking some boxing, man. So, I mean... Uh, I, I, I guess fill us in. How are you and Jose and, um, you know, how is this time treating you? Is it, Are you finding it difficult? You know what? Uh, yeah, it is difficult, man, you know, but we're blessed. You know, we're here. You know, thank God I'm with my uh, both of my kids. Uh, I became a grandfather. You know, David's having another, another baby. So, uh, you know, all I ask is for them to be healthy when they, they're born. You know, but we're, I'm blessed, man. I'm super happy, you know. And uh, I think uh, things are going to get back to normal pretty soon. And we're excited, you know, to continue, you know, and working hard. You said pretty soon. What, what, what month does your optimism tell you? Uh, you know, when I say pretty soon, it's whenever, you know, to be honest with you right now, we don't know. We don't know a date, but I'm just staying uh, 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 motivated. And, and you know, uh, I'm thinking uh, maybe, I don't know, the end of April, maybe, if not, you know, I mean, uh, whatever, however, you know, whatever it takes, you know, we're just going to try to stay safe, you know, and uh, I, I recommend everybody to, to do the same, you know, stay home and try not to go as much as you can, you know, so you don't spread the virus. Now, uh, Jose, what kind of work, if any, can you, uh, I mean, are you still even attempting to try to get in work with David or, or um, I mean, I know you're saying that y'all are taking it safe, but, uh, you know, is there any sort of stuff that y'all are doing at home or does there a bag there or? Yeah, you know what? I, actually, you know, I just, uh, before everything happened, I was opening a brand new gym, you know, uh, in Buren, Washington. Uh, and everything, you know, we just finished like uh, three days ago. So the gym, you know, is really clean. And uh, I was talking to David today, actually, and I was saying, you know, hey, you know, we, uh, it's up to you, you know. I was just, I just wanted to see what he was thinking, you know. But I thought, hey, you know, I think uh, we, can, we should train just in case something happens because, I talked to our promotions, and they said that David will be the first one to go, you know, when everything clears up, you know, because uh, he, he's going to be fighting for a world title and uh, to be ready. So at the same time, you know, I, I mean, uh, we're being very careful, and, you know, it's up to him to, to take that decision and see if he wants to train. But he, he was moving, actually. last uh, We stopped training last Monday. Uh, we were just moving around and staying, uh, maintaining, you know, but... Uh, it's a hard decision to do. So uh, after this uh, interview, we're, we're going to sit down and talk and see uh, if we continue to work. I told him, hey, we should come in the morning, run. I had some treadmills here, and uh, nobody's here. You know, nobody has stepped in here uh, yet. So uh, we can do our, our all our training in here and continue just in case something happens, we're ready. So, uh, Jose, man, um, 
how was it, I guess, getting the news? I know we all seen the uh, David Post. Uh, you know, he was given the news by his um, wife that they're going to have another kid. How are you feeling now? Uh, you know, obviously, this is, you're like a two, three-time grandfather now, right? Uh, this is the second time, I believe. Not that I know, you know, but this will be the second time. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I feel super excited, super happy, you know, at the end of the day. I love them, and, you know, I love their, their children, you know. Like, I mean, they, they, they have my blood, you know. So I'm super excited, you know. This to me is new, but I feel so excited. Junior's sending me pictures every day, you know. He calls me, like, about 10 times a day, you know. And, and uh, you know, I uh, her name is Amora, you know. I, you know, every day, you know, you just stay connected and you love her more and more, you know, I mean, it's something amazing, something that I can't even explain because it's different, you know, I, I dedicated myself to them uh, for their careers, you know, and I just hope that they do the same for their kids, you know, uh, work hard and, and, and show them, guide them to, through whatever dreams they have, you know, uh, and uh, as soon as David has his baby too, you know, it's something special, you know, something uh, I want to be part of it and, and uh I think that's what it's going to be, you know, and, and, and I mean, enjoy every minute of it. Jose, how you doing? This is Alex uh, with the Boxing Voice. Uh, thank you for coming on. You know, I was just curious, you know, uh, you've been a big influence in, in both your son's lives and in, in, in their boxing career and starting them up. Uh, where did your love for the sport come uh, from? And uh, were you introduced uh, to boxing at an early age? You know, a lot of people don't know. Uh, you know, I grew up without parents, you know. Uh, man, uh, uh, I, I came to the United States when I was 11 years old. David uh, Jr. was born when I was 14, almost 15 years old. I was a kid, you know, but I was so mature because I, I struggled and I learned how to survive in Mexico, you know, just for food, you know. Um, but, um, man, it, 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 I mean, it, it was super hard, you know, and I, uh, to me, I just want to put Jr. in some, something, any sports, and I did put him in other sports, but boxing was the one that he felt, he felt connected and, I didn't know nothing about boxing, and I learned, and days and nights I would study and learn in order for me to help them, you know. And like I said, you know, I dedicated myself to them, and I thought my, my life was over, and I just wanted to be there for them to for them to get to their goals. My goals were over, you know. I didn't have no goals. My goal was only to help them get to their goals. Well, yeah, thank, thank, yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, uh, I can see where the strength comes from in, in, in them. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Go ahead, Mario. Yeah, that's a true father right there. Uh, listen, Jose, I'm going to ask you this because I'm going to assume if they already told you that David was up first, you know, in, in this order and what's going on, that maybe they told you a little bit more. Is, is it, Have they said anything about possibly fighting with no crowd or, or a studio fight or something like that? I mean, have they given you any Not indication? Yet. Uh, nothing. Okay. That's no, fair. Not yet. They gave me a day like June, June, July. They said, you know, uh, that's what they're uh, aiming at. You know, like I said, that's why we got to stay focused. We got to train, but nothing yet. You know, nothing. You know, like nobody can say nothing yet because there's we don't know. Does it make sense? But uh, but we're here. You know, we just got to be ready for the opportunities and and work hard. You know, we can we can't just. I mean, life continues. You know, but at the same time, we got to be super careful, extra careful. And make sure, uh, you know, health is the most important thing at this time right now. Yeah, it absolutely is. Go ahead, Ness. I'm sorry. So, Jose, we got some questions from the people. Uh, Brandon in Cincinnati says, what does Jose Jr. plan on doing next? I would love to see him fight versus me, Machine. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, we spar him a lot of times. You know, Dave Jr. right now, he's very motivated. And uh, this has changed his life. His little girl has changed his life. And I think he mature a lot. Uh, he's very motivated, and I'm hoping that, you know, he fights for his daughter now, you know, not just for him. And I think uh, he understands, and he's more mature, and I think he's going to come back stronger. I mean, that's the only thing that he loves doing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, he is going to come as soon as everything uh, uh, ends. You know, he's going to uh, come and train hard. Min Machine will be a great fight. You know, we know him. He's strong. Uh, uh, we spar a lot of times, and uh, that will be a great fight. George Foster in the UK says some boxing fans are downplaying Crawford's win over Jose by saying he was injured going into the fight. What was his condition yeah, he, exactly he, he going was, into he was, the fight? You know, I, I advise I advise Junior not to take that fight, you know, because I you know he wasn't healed hundred uh, percent. that was but that wasn't my decision. He decided to fight. 
uh, you know, I told him let's fight one or two more fights, and then we can fight Crawford. You know, he only he was he only trained like sixty percent of his capacity. You know, so uh, you know that's the fight that we won. You know, nothing taken away from Terrence Crawford. He's a really good fighter. Uh, he's a champion for a reason. But we would love to get a rematch now. You know, now what I'm thinking now. Uh, Dave Junior is very motivated. You know, he has this little girl now, so he has more more uh will you know more 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 hunger you know to fight and i think that that will really change the outcome at this fight you know not not taking nothing away from Terrence crawford you know but i think it's going to be a i'm more more confident this time you know if we could get the rematch and i think a lot of people want to see the rematch and i don't see why not you know it was a good fight how's the uh injury uh uh since since that fight yeah, everything's going well. You know, I was uh, I was a little bit uh, nervous when he was uh, coming into that fight because of the leg, but he showed me that it got a little bit better. Now he's healed more, so maybe he's at eighty or ninety percent. So that's a good sign. Um, and no, he's doing well. He's doing really good. And and like I said, you know, and now uh, he, he's more hungry because of his daughter. I think, uh, and I think uh, he's not going to put any attention to any paints or whatever. You know, he's going to try to provide for his family now. And I think that's going to make him a little bit more dangerous. Cisco, <clears throat> excuse me. Cisco promotion says, "I want to bet the house on David knocking out Caleb Plant." Realistically speaking, how many more fights until that big matchup? I won that fight right now, man. You know, as soon as he said, "I'm tired of chasing David Benavides," you know, we've been trying to get that fight. Uh, you know, not not taking nothing away from Caleb Plant too. He's a good champion. Uh, I don't think he could. Uh, I mean, take a big punch like David, you know. That's a fight we want to do uh, because it will unify belts, and I think uh, that will put David in another level. Uh, right now, I heard Canelo doesn't have a, a fighter. Uh, we were also, you know, I heard that, you know, he didn't have fighters. Uh, they were asking for too much money. I said, we'll fight him for free. And, and you know, when I say free, you know, I'm just looking at the big picture. I'm looking at big opportunities, you know. Like, imagine if David, and I know that he's going to win, you know, he becomes a superstar, you know, and that's what I'm looking at. In order to be the best in the world, you got to be the best and you got to give the people good fights, you know, that, that people want to see, you know, and, and Canelo and David would be a, a super big, big fight. And but going back to uh, Caleb plan, you know, that would be another good fight that we want to do now. You know, now I, I call this promoter, I mean, his manager and I say, hey, listen, we have the same promoter. Let's make that fight happen. But they don't want to do it now. They, they think that it's not time right now. So I don't know what else to do. But by they, you mean Samson, right? Because i seen a video with Samson. No, 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 no. Samson, Samson, you know, Samson is the promoter. I'm the manager. I make those decisions. David makes those decisions. Does it make sense? You know, when you hear, oh, well, the promoters don't want to make that. It just, it's not true, you know. It's about the fighter, who he wants to fight. Does it make sense? Now, if the other fighter doesn't want to fight, you can make those fights. But in re in realistically, it's, it's the fighters that want to fight, you know. It, the promoters, you know, they're there to support you. But if you really want that fight, they'll make it happen. Unless the other the other person doesn't want to make it. I don't you know. Drop if that makes off. Sense. No, they just froze. It's Ness. Yeah. It'll uh, come back. Uh, all right. So we got. Hello. Yeah, you hear me? David. I mean, Hello? Jose, you hear me? Hello. Froses us. It froze us out. Hello. Yeah, you froze completely. That's so strange, bro. I I heard you guys like every single time. I heard you saying he froze. I'm like, I, I'm not froze. I'm right here. I heard. Um, Got it. I could hear Jose saying, uh, you know, hello. Uh, Jose, give me a minute to reconnect you. Yeah, I don't know. That's so strange. I'm like, I don't. I'm like literally staring at y'all, hearing y'all talk to me, and y'all can't hear me. I don't get it. So yeah, it, it just like froze, like the way that when Skype drops drops off sometimes. That's kind of what it was like. But uh, yeah, man, we got to get him back because uh, yeah, this is some great stuff that he's given us. And uh, man, I cannot wait to chop it up about him saying that they were, you know, they get, they get first dibs. Um, that makes me think these promoters are already, and Hearn has said stuff like that. Um, Espinosa said stuff like that. Like these guys are ready to go. Like they are, you know, it's like a, it's like a race and they have their, you know, they're getting their cleats ready or whatever you wear on tracks. 
you know, they're stretching, they're warming up, they got their gear ready, like everything. And as soon as I think this goes, we're going to see some bangs. That's actually one of the notes uh, for today is that Hearn is talking about, you know, some big fights and big fighters are going to be rushed along because of this, uh, you know, COVID-19 situation, which uh, is interesting. So they're already saying, you know, David's first up. Well, they got, they must have a second up and third up and fourth up. You know what I'm saying? So it's an interesting way to, um, to look at it because I don't know if that, that, that doesn't really happen often. I mean, yes, they have plans for fighters, excuse me, but this is an unprecedented situation and to tell a fighter, you know, Hey, be ready. You're going to go up first. I can understand that it's not fair, but the game ain't always fair. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't know, do me if somebody told you, yo, you're going to be up first when in this situation like this, like what would that do to you as a fighter? Like would it scare you more? Like would it make you more motivated? I mean, I mean, look, uh, it's all a matter of what you're doing off the clock. It's always been that, you know what I'm saying? If you live in the life like Sean Porter, maintain yourself healthy, hey, you're okay. Uh, Jose, Jose, let me connect you. I'm sorry. We had uh, got disconnected. All right. Guys, uh, we got David yeah. on the line now. David, you there? Hello? Yes, how are yeah, you? Yeah, hey, I'm right here. I'm doing good, myself. Oh, we're good, man. Happy to have you, man. First and foremost, thank you for taking out the time to come on the show, man. Uh, we were having a good conversation with your dad. Kind of lost a little signal there. I'm going to pass you to my co-host, Mario Munguia. And once again, thank you. Okay, how you doing, good. David? Thank you my, again, too. Mario Munguia here. Uh, so uh, just this whole you know situation, talk to us about it. Uh, specifically, your dad said that he spoke to you about possibly training. He's got like a decent situation uh, going on. Uh, so what's life been like, and uh, do you think you're going to decide to start training during this time? I mean, this, uh, the, I've been training for months, you know what I mean? It's just that I, I had that fight going on in April 18th, so I had already about 10 weeks training, you know what I mean? I was already moving. Of but since the fight got canceled, I'm like, you know what? Um, we don't even know what to do no more because there's no, there's no dates. You know, the, the government shut down for another sh uh, 30 days out here. And it was already shut down for 30 days. It was like two months in Washington and you had to stay inside. So, you know, I just, I, I felt like, you know, I was just probably just trained from home if all this thing was getting serious. But, you know, I'm probably, my dad just opened his gym. So I'm just going to start training on Monday, you know, um, might as well just be ready. Is this that the thing that sucks is that we can't get no sparring partners out here because obviously nobody wants to come yeah. and, you know, even uh, attempt to, you know, try to get the coronavirus. So we're just going to be training, running, you know, um, and see what happens, man. Um, this thing is, you know, it's getting really serious, man. I think, like, in the world, there's already a million cases of people infected. So yeah. I don't think nobody knows what's going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, I heard that out here they're probably going to close until June. They're probably going to do it. Uh, they have to stay home until June. So, you know, there's really no telling them what's going to happen, you know, but I think the best thing we could do is just stay in the gym and train until they give us the go to bring our sparring partners out here. Then we'll, we can have the, the full the full training camp. Now, if you, uh, oh, okay, you know what? Uh, he talked about the fact that they said that, you know, you're going to be up first when this whole thing uh, is said and done and, you know, you're getting a title shot. Um, does it, what does it do to the mentality right now, knowing that you can't get the sparring, knowing that you could possibly be walking into the biggest fight of your life and unable to prepare the way uh, that you could? I mean, would you insist on taking a, a tune-up fight if this thing goes too far, or, or no matter what, are you going to shoot your shot? I mean, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm always going to have a good training. I'm always going to have a good training camp, no matter what. I mean, if they give us, they tell us. They, they give us a little bit, uh, not not as much time for a training camp. You know, I'm going to tell them, you know, I need a little, a little bit more time for the sparring partners and all that. I think right now is what I'm trying to do is just keep my weight down and then, you know, I, and then just, you know, get the sparring out here. But, you know, it, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm, a, I'm not going to ask for no tuna fight or nobody. You know, I'm always going to be 100% on all my fights. All right, David. Uh, we got some questions from the people, David, so I just want to go out to those. We got uh, Steven Chicago says, what's up, champ? Do you see a unification fight between yourself and Caleb Plant in the near future? Definitely. You know, um, that's definitely the fight I want. That's the fight everybody wants. So I feel like, you know, I think this whole process, is, uh, this whole coronavirus is slowing that process down, too, though. 
But, you know, if if I could get him after this next fight, then that would that'll be perfect. You know, I want to make that fight happen as soon as possible. Champ, I, I, I got to know your thoughts, man. Uh, hearing the news that he turned down the Canelo fight, saying that it wasn't enough time after his Feisenbutz fight, uh, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's very disappointing, you know, only only because of the fact that, you know, Caleb Plant, he says he's this all-year-round fighter, that he always stays in weight. When they offered him the fight, you know, it was was it? It was eleven weeks, ten weeks. You know, so if you don't have to lose no weight, you know, take two weeks off. You still got eight weeks to do a camp. That's more than enough time for a fighter who doesn't have to lose weight, especially from a fighter who just came off a of camp. You know, in two weeks your body is healed. So I don't know what he was talking about, saying that he didn't have enough time to train for a fight. That's the thing I'm talking about. This guy, man, he's just bullshitting the whole way. He's just talking all this shit. But when he gets, you know, they give him these opportunities, he makes up these excuses. Like, honestly, like, you think, what do you think about him not taking that fight? If I told you, what do you think about that? Big mistake. You think it was a good, it was, it was, a, it was a bad I, look. It was a bad look. I thought it was a good idea not to take it because uh, Kovalev shown us that, you know, going right into a fight, coming out no. of a fight, it, he's not the same. Yeah, but Kovalev, but Kovalev, Kovalev got dropped in the fight before that. He was, he was about to get knocked out. The Caleb Plant didn't even get hurt the whole fight. When That's when when Kovalev fought, fought Anthony Yarday, he was getting rocked. You know, he was getting rocked a couple rounds. He got dropped. You know, and I, I, I don't remember him getting dropped. Fight, but it was a hard fight. I don't think he, said he, no, he almost he got, got dropped. dropped. He said he almost got dropped. He got oh, rocked. Right, yeah. right, he got right. rocked. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, so David, I don't know, are, man. David, are you saying that you would have taken that 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 opportunity if they would have came to you? You would have taken any offer they would have given you. Not oh, any yeah. offer. Don't Please. answer that, champ. Don't answer that. Not nah, any offer. Off. Not any, not I mean, any offer. Of day, you know, me and my team, we know what we're doing. You know, we're not going to just take, we're not going to take anything. But like how my dad said, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. If you have the confidence in yourself and you beat Canelo, you excel to that next, that superstar level. If you beat Canelo. You, if the money doesn't start with Canelo, if you beat Canelo, that you make so much money after. You know what I mean? That's just a, those are, those are the risks you, you have to take. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. Well, first and foremost, congratulations on the uh, announcement of your your newborn, man. You know, uh, congratulations to you and your wife. I uh, forgot to say that. At least we got another one coming from. Um, looks like George Foster in the UK says, "Who do you think will be your biggest threat in the super middleweight division?" Um, biggest threat. I mean, I don't really look at anybody as threats. You know, there's a lot of great fighters out there. I probably say the the best fight, you know, the hardest fight I have at 168 is probably Canelo. If uh, you know, if that's ever, if I ever get that opportunity, well, besides Canelo, I think the second best at 168 is Colin Smith. You know, those two fighters, you know, I, those, that's that's those are dream fights in my head. You know what I mean? And when I do get the opportunity, you know, I'm just I'm gonna show everybody how good I am. You know, so that's I'm very, uh, you know, if that's possible, I'm very excited to get those fights in the future. Caesar in Las Vegas had the same exact question, so we'll just give him a shout out. We're going out to George, uh, who says, "Would you fight Julio Caesar Chavez Jr.? Low risk, high reward." Um, yeah, I mean, I'll fight him. Yeah, I've sparred him many times before, and I'd, I'd definitely fight him. I thought I was going to fight him, you know, last year. No, actually, I was supposed to fight him instead of Jamie on Love in Texas, but then he came out positive with that, or I don't know what happened. So, I mean, I'll definitely fight Chavez. You know, he's a fan. He's a fan-friendly fighter. You know, um, he comes forward. You know, it's just that the thing is that, the thing about that is that fight is that if he's going to make weight, if he's not going to make weight, you know what I mean? But I, I'll definitely fight him. We got the earthquake that says, how have you been dealing with the downtime caused by the corona? But you've already answered that. Just wanted to give him a shout out. We got Ryan, a.k.a. Dempsey, says, can you name a few former fighters or champions you spar with while coming up as a young kid? Well, I, I sparred uh, Kelly Pavlik as one, Kid Chocolate was one, Gabriel Rosado, Golovkin, um... Yeah, well, that's from back then. Yeah, I've sparred a lot of world champions. And recently, I've sparred, you know, Bivol, you know, uh, Sudo Ramirez. You know, if they weigh 168 or 175 and they're champions, I'm, I'm pretty sure I sparred them. 
So, you know, I've, I've had a lot of good work with a lot of... I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of these these champions that they've given me gave, they've gave me an opportunity. So, you know, again, shout out to all the champions that let me spar them, you know, when I was an amateur. So, you know, I'm very, uh, very happy about that as well. How do you think Zuldo would do if he ever got a shot at Canelo? Um... I don't know, man. I think he would do good. I feel like I think he just needs to get a fight. Don't matter, uh, don't matter who it is. You know, I haven't seen that dude fight in like two years. I don't know if his contract's messed up or anything's going on. But you know, I, I would love to see that guy back in the ring again. That's one of the one of the other guys I would love to fight too, Sergio Ramirez. But um, uh, I think he would do good with Canelo too. I'd love to see y'all two fight. That'd be a great fight. Yeah, we got. Yeah. We got. No, and I, I spark. I, I sparred him for for a year, like two or three years, and that's how I know it would be a great fight because you know that guy, me and that guy would have some would have some amazing uh, uh, some amazing sparrings, you know, when we're we're working. So I, that's how I know it would be a great fight. Yeah, he's uh, he's gonna be on the show in uh, April sixteenth. We'll, we'll be talking to him, so I'm definitely gonna present that possible Benavidez fight. But let me go back to these public questions. We got. Um, Brandon in Cincinnati says, I know you were a chubby kid growing up. Now that you're a boxing star, have you ever... <laughs> this guy, bro. Yo, you're a, ma you're a married man. We won't finish that question. These guys put me in the most awkward positions here. Uh, Sway says, rank the other super middleweight champs in order of who you want to fight. You've already said that. Brandon is crazy. Danny Ramirez says, do you see yourself going as high as heavyweight in the future? Um, I don't know about heavyweight. Um, I, I really, I do want to go up to 175 one day. And then I do want to go up to cruiserweight just to test the waters. And then if cruiserweight, you know, but that's talking about like when I'm 27, 28 cruiserweight. So I don't know. Maybe, man. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. You know, maybe there could be a possibility. So, I mean, if Andy Reeves, if Andy Reeves is my height, you know, and I know Andy Reeves, you know, so he, if you know if he can be the world champion of the uh, heavyweight world champion, then maybe one day I could be too. You know, it's, I don't. It's, it's with time. You know. I'm gonna I'm gonna reword this question. So um, he said, uh, it, "I know you were a chubby kid growing up. Now that you're a boxing star, have you ever crossed paths with any girls that played you out in the past?" Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely, bro. You know, since back then, I remember, you know, girls wouldn't want to, you know, give me the chance to look at me, you know. They look at me like a, like a you know, just because I was telling you, look like a dumbass. But then now they see me, you know, of course, now they're all, uh, they're not, they're, now they're all regretting what they, what they said to me back then. So I'm not really tripping about that. I'm already, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a baby. I, I got a girlfriend. I'm about to have a baby too, you know, so I'm happy right now. I'm not worried about that. Exactly, champ. Uh, let's see. We got Brandon Lopez says, thanks for taking the time to come on The Boxing Voice. Big fan of yours, especially because I'm from Phoenix. I'm looking forward to attending your fight against Angulo whenever it happens. Stay safe and healthy, champ. Keep putting Phoenix on the map. So no question, just love. Yeah, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. We got Trey Miller says, would you go to the UK for the Callum Smith fight? Definitely. It's always been one of my dreams to find the UK, too, only because, the, the, you know, the crowds out there are insane. You know, I, I, that's what I really do respect about the, you know, the UK boxing scene. They all really come to come to support their guys. So I, I would love to fight in the UK. Intriguing Atlanta says, if Keith won Tom Thurman and Terrence Bud Crawford fight happens, who would you pick? Yeah, that's a good fight. Um... I don't know. Uh, I would go with, to be honest, I would go to Keith Thurman, man. I, I love the way Keith Thurman fights. You know, he's a he's a great power punch. I've always been a fan of him. You know, um, obviously, I don't really like Terrence Crawford because, you know, he beat my brother. So, I'm going with Keith Thurman. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, champ. I hear you. Jemmy in Delaware says, congrats, man. I saw your IG. You got a baby on the way. Now, if Golden Boy makes you an offer to fight Canelo on the zone, are you going to step up? Or do you think you'd be advised otherwise? And do you have a say in it? Or is it up to your manager advisor? 
Well, I feel like, you know, if we get offered a Canelo fight, I feel like, you know, PBC, you know, me and my company, everybody who I'm with, we we all win. You know, I think that's, that's probably the best case scenario for everybody, you know. Um, and then not only that, to give the, the boxing fans a great fight. You know, you you see, um, you know, they're doing cross, they're doing more and more crossover with the cross promotion with, you know, uh, Josh or Joshua and Reed, you know, Wilder and Fury. So I think, you know, uh, you know, I think boxing is getting better with all the promotion. The boxing is getting better with all the promotions and stuff with uh, everybody fighting with each other. So I feel like, you know, I'd, um, I would take the fight. I'll definitely take the fight. Two more, champ, and you're out of here. I want to thank you again for your time. We got Brandon Terry that says, do you feel like the fight between you and Keller Plant is a pay-per-view fight? I feel like it can be a pay-per-view fight. Um, you know, I feel like I think just the build-up to the fight probably would make it pay-per-view worthy, you know, because, you know, we, we we definitely don't like each other. I don't like him. He doesn't like me, so, you know, it's, but I think for it to be a pay-per-view worthy card, they have to put some great undercards on that fight. For sure. Last one from uh, Josue Boxeo says, would you move to 175 and fight Arthur Better BF for a legacy fight? I mean, that definitely would, uh, that was definitely one of the, one of the goals in my lifetime right now. But, you know, I feel like I'm just going to take care of everything I got to take care of at 168 first before I've been thinking about going up to 175. But that's definitely one of my dreams, too, to fight, you know, uh, Berta B, um, what's his name, Pivo, all those guys. There's, there's so much great fights at 175, too, but, you know, we're moving one step at a time right now. All right. I think that is it. I want to thank you, obviously, for your time, uh, David, and obviously Jose as well. We appreciate you guys coming on the program. want to thank you. Uh, if you can, give out any social media. And, yeah, man, ha have a great day. Okay, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I just want to tell everybody to stay safe, man. Um, this coronavirus is, you know, some crazy stuff. So please, everybody, just stay home, man. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this thing gets better soon. All right. Well, there you have it, All ladies right, well, and gentlemen. Thank you. thank you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. David and Jose Benavidez. want to thank them once again for coming on the program. Uh, happy to have gotten that off properly. Uh, answered all the questions the right way, man. I mean, he wants the the the, the Caleb Plant fight, fight. He wants the Callum Smith fight. He wants the uh, Canelo fight. Now we just got to see which fight he actually gets. Yeah, he he he, he don't hold back either, man. Like, no, I don't not like at that, all. dude. I, I like that attitude. I like the the realness of it. Um, and yeah, man, he's just he has the attributes, man. He's rangy, punches fast, hard. I mean, when he when he let Porky have it that one time, he that was oh, a believer. Yeah. I was a believer with that shit. <laughs> See, and and you know, he asked us like what we thought about the Caleb, uh, Caleb Plant situation with Canelo. And, and here's the thing: that alone didn't doesn't hurt Caleb Plant. I think the issue was that there were so many names being thrown out, and it seemed like everybody was just declining the fight for more money. That. Now he gets lumped into it. You know what I'm saying? He gets lumped into that scenario uh, with Caleb and everybody else. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's just kind of rough. It's a it, it's a bad look, I think. And whether yeah, it was but, the right decision he or turned not, it down it just for time. the perception. He turned it down for time, whereas Caleb and others, they turned it down for money, then got sad. You're absolutely right. Then but got that's the sad. Point I'm when to no, make. no, no, no secondary right. offer came, they start crying in the media. Of course. But what I'm trying to say is that it, because all of that happened so close together, that essentially you correlate all of them together. Like, whatever excuses any of them had, it's kind of like that's all their excuses. And maybe I'm just looking at it as a pessimist, but... Uh, but I, I don't know. I just didn't think it was a good look. So I understood where he was coming from when he said that. But, uh, yeah, man, listen, him coming back and, and having the first outing is basically what they're saying to him. Uh, that's big time to me. I think that's I think that's a bigger story than we realize. Not that alone, but I think the indications of what could be cooking behind the scenes. How many fights – are they getting ready for like, okay, when we come back, we got to get into business. We have to make fights that are going to make money because we need money and we need the, and, and people aren't going to spend their money like they, they, like they were before. So we need fights that people are going to say, you know what, this is worth, you know, X amount of dollars so in, much, in our I'm, economy. I don't how know if it's even that? worth rushing to an event. Like, you know, the last part of everything you said is we'll run the, the, you know, the, the truest to me, which is. How do you give a, a boxing date 
for an event for people to go out and enjoy themselves when we need to kind of assess who's mm-hmm. going back to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who has and, a and job to go back to? I mean, I'm pretty I think that's sure what these promoters are looking at. You, you're going to have to get tested, too, as a fighter. You know, I mean, I don't know if every fighter has gotten tested for COVID. I, I would hope, man, because I, I remember I there, were, there were fighters that weren't being tested. Like, right when it was popping off and fights were getting shut down and the ones that weren't getting shut down, they were fighting in, like, short, you know, uh, closed-circuit venues the way that, like, uh, Marlon Sims fought. They didn't get tested. I asked them. They didn't get tested. So... Yeah, that's something that, that, you know, these fighters are going to have to push for now. Like, yo, I ain't getting in the ring. Did he get tested? Or was he one of the ones that just waited? Yeah, because it's like the testing, I'm pretty sure it's like it's now just come out. The testing has is, is never been around for a COVID I, uh, a virus, right? Right, uh, Enrique? Or am I nah, wrong? No, nah, no, there's testing, a lot of testing going on right now. Available. No, 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 I mean in the past, before the Oh, virus. no, there was no testing. It so, yeah, because I, I was trying to get to is like if if they maybe were get their normal testing, the, the virus would come up or something. But they didn't have anything for it. So See, yeah. they still don't have anything that will show whether or not it was – if that you've had it, that you were a carrier, you know what I'm saying? Like right now they're working on tests, specifically blood tests that they use for uh, other viruses. And they're trying to get those perfected so that they can, so we can know if this person at all was a carrier or if it was at all in their system, uh, you know, to a certain extent, because that's the biggest thing right now. We can tell if somebody has it or doesn't. And by the way, wall street journal reported today that one in three people being given negative tests are actually, actually do have Corona. So that's an even scarier thing well, to get a negative things. test and, and then to go out there and, and, and still be, uh, you know, spreading it. Um, mm. I want to go back to like people going to an actual live event um, and worried more than people being unemployed. I think um, people are dying and itching to go out. Like I see tweets like, "I miss going out. I For miss sure. buying sneakers. I miss." So I think that the turnout of an event live is gonna happen. But then I wonder if the scare of Corona will really get a ticket sold. You That's know what, what I mean? I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I think these promoters understand that, and they're telling themselves, "Okay." And they're getting their teams together and they say, what fights can we make that are going to be the most attractive, that are going to give people the reason to spend this money that is so precious at this point? There's, and, no, and, money, you there's know? no reason if you're, if you're scared of, like, if you're worried about your health. What they did in China when they, they made an announcement, oh, the subway system in China is now open. But to take the train... The train, they check your temperature. So if you're feverish, you can't get on the train. Maybe something like that might go in effect uh, at arenas. Hmm, that's a that's a good point. I wonder if they could do that. Like, I mean, I'm nah, sure they man, could, this, right? This, this thing no? is not the, the way I I see this thing going is that we're not going to be able to get you know a live arena show and until everything has been. You have to after we get a grip of this, you know, people are going to have to well, get vaccinated. Grip. People are also going to have to, uh, uh, you know, get tested because there's more and more tests coming in each and every day. Like, you just don't know exactly when. With and grip. and 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 they also said that they're not when everything's okay. They're not just hey. going to let the net loose and let all everything go in one shot where where everybody's just going to you know come back to regular life they're going to slowly integrate us back into um our regular days it's not just going to be like oh we can have 100 200 or whatever 1000 people together let's go no right. it's going to it's going to be integrated slowly again and we don't know how long that's going to take cuz so at first any- remember it was like at 500 or less then it was like 50 people or less then yeah. it was 6 feet social distance so so think of the reverse happening when we right in- integrate again it's just going to be yeah, going to go lowest- up the numbers but yeah. by the time because like you said they got to get a grasp the real grasp takes another not another but from march when they did the first vaccination to 2020 so if a fight happens in September, October, that that's the fall when they're expecting another wave of corona. So we may not get any live event in boxing. Listen, everything's gonna fall on what y'all's been saying. Y'all's been saying that it's it's gonna be the most attractive fights. So 
up until when we get a control for this, only the biggest fights, I think, are going to be considered for dates because everybody's mm-hmm. trying to make up for what they lost in the first, in the second sorry, quarter. Yeah. Sorry, first, sorry, you know sorry, sorry, sorry. Excuse me. Hate to interrupt, but we do got our last guest on. Sorry about that, Mr. Gashay. I did not see you on the line. But first and foremost, I want to thank you, obviously, for coming on the program and uh, hope you're doing well during this time. How are you? Yeah, what's up, man? I'm I'm doing good. I can't complain. All right, man. So let's jump into it. I mean, all the other fighters are putting out their little clips, how they're staying uh, busy in terms of staying in shape. But what is uh, Terrell doing to, to make sure he ain't got a, a, a big old gut coming into the ring? <laughs> yeah, I, I um I'm always running. You know, that's that's what I do. Uh, I do a run. Uh, Yesterday, I got it in seven miles. I ain't going to lie, I ain't run today. But, uh, yeah, so I've just been keeping up with my running, doing my um, sit-ups and push-ups, calisthenics, stuff like that, and also shadow boxing. Where, where, where's your optimism lie with this situation, man? Where, when are you, I guess, hoping to get out of this in terms of when, you know, things are cleared up and we could actually get you back in the ring? Um, man, uh, hopefully soon. Cause I, I was out here, um, in California training for a while, uh, you know, trying to set up a fight there and, you know, I just came off an injury and, um, so I had to, you know, sit out for a while and that now, now we got this, but at the end of the day, we fighters, we gotta, we just gotta stay ready. Cause, um, you know, it's life. Sometimes things happen, but we can't fall off in the midst of all of this. <clears throat> so I would like to say to answer your question, I would like to say probably, hopefully things get better and uh, maybe like June or something like that. I don't know. Terrell Geisha, uh, welcome to the show. Enrique Church here, aka the Casual Fan. Um, I have a question. Uh, you said you didn't run today, yeah. but you're doing your calisthenics. Do you believe once the gym is uh-huh. open and sparring is now implicated that you have to go extra sparring, extra more work because you never know, you have to stay extra ready for that date that may come when you had a lot of time off? Um, I, I would say I wouldn't, I wouldn't do too much. You, you know, with sparring, a lot of times the guys don't know that um, – it be the camps that wear fighters out, and it don't it, it don't necessarily be the fights. But I was sparring before this, um, you know, before we stopped. I was sparring. So once once we get back to the gym, I'm gonna just pick up pick up where I left off. You feel people will be rusty because they haven't like there'll be some sparring rust, and that's what you got to shake off. So you have to have a couple extra sparring yeah, to the fight. Is- Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's all about time, and you know, when you when you sparring, <clears throat> you getting your time and and stuff like that. So you probably will be a little rusty, but I think at the top level, um, guys like us don't take us. It don't take us too long to get back in the um, get back in the mix like that. So it it just all depends on the indiv- individual boxer. Now, Terrell, let me uh, let me go in the opposite direction of this, okay? Because you have to go all the way back to I think it was 2016. Arthur Abraham uh, is the last time that you only had one fight wow. in a year. Uh, obviously, that happened in 2019 as mm-hmm. well. But uh, mm-hmm. if you are going to need time, or okay, but at at level fighters at your level, you're saying you know don't need that time. If you were to be offered uh, a fight right off the bat, let's say that we come back fully in December, or January. Would you take like uh, you know mm-hmm. as big a fight as you can, or are you gonna insist on taking um, you know a, a one or maybe even two tune-up fights? No, I I, I don't want no tune-up. I'm I'm trying to okay. jump right back in the deep end. It's a uh, it's a good loaded division. You know, it's a lot of guys out there. I ain't want to call names, but you know, we we all know who out there is. Uh, you know, we got Jared Hurst. We got. Uh, we got Lubin, we got Harrison, we got all these guys. So one of them, <clears throat> whoever, I think it's the right time to fight these guys right now. So you I willing, said all day, bro. I'm MV, but I'm so you willing, ahead, you willing to face Tony Harrison? Yeah, I'll fight. I'll fight. That's that's a good fight for me, of course. And you said Lubin. You 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 willing to fight Lubin? Any one of them guys, like you know, it's. No, no point of waiting. We all, uh, 
you know, we all been been at the, this level for a while. We we got to meet up. So <clears throat> any one of these guys at that level, it's time to get it on right now. What, what do In you your think mind, is who's the bigger, lowest hanging fruit? Let me. What do you think is a bigger oh, win for you next? Right, like let's say coronavirus wasn't around, and, and, and you know you got to date your next fight. Is it a win over Lubin, or is it a win over uh, Harrison, who's coming off of a loss? Uh, you know, even even with the loss, he he's still a top level guy. So either one of them fights would be good for me. Um, I I would I would think uh, for for me and Lubin, it's a little bit more personal because you know he played with my name a little bit, and I don't, I don't play that so. When we had the fight, <clears throat> I got injured. Of course, I had to pull out, but he made it like it was an excuse, and I, I never ducked a fighter in my life. So he was doing a little talking on social media. So for me, if I can get that fight, just unfinished business. But if not, it's still other fighters out there. So um, like I said, it's, we can make it happen. I'm ready to rock and roll with whoever. Is there anybody that you consider like low hanging fruit? Somebody that you think that you could get to of the names that you've uh, uh, mentioned that that you could get to the easiest? Uh, no, we have to just wait and see. But them, you know, them uh, definitely options. We just have to wait and see how, you know, once all this over, you know, how we can make it happen. Because I'm open to fight anyone. We don't know how everybody else is on the other side, you know. So. <clears throat> Just gotta wait and see. Hey, Terrell, this is Alex uh, with the Boxing Voice. Thanks for coming on. Uh, I just had a question. Uh, how uh, are you still in Encino, California? Is that is that where you're staying at? Yeah. How how yeah, has uh, this coronavirus uh, you know affected your area and uh, um, you know and 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 what have you seen uh, uh, as far as people you know practicing th- social distancing in 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 your area? And do you have a message you know for the public? Um, for, as far as where I'm at, I think most of the, most of the people is, um, trying to go by the rules, you know, uh, you know, when we go grocery shopping, it's a couple of people at a time standing at a distance and stuff like that. So my message would be for everybody's kind of abide by the rules so we can get through this thing. Um, you know, and everyone be safe as well, because health is, health is very important. <clears throat> and, um, it's de- it's definitely a real thing, and I I would just say let's just abide by the rules so we can get through this. So Terrell, um, did you already have your baby, or is your wife pregnant now? No, I have a son. He's he's uh he was born on seventeenth uh, February. Oh, okay. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I thought uh she was still yeah. pregnant. Okay. How's how is that? How is yeah, you thanks. know being a father and you know the newborn? Yeah, it's definitely good, man. You know we always want to um, you know I wanted the son and it, it happened, so thank God for that. And then I'm just watching him grow up, spending a lot of time with him. You know, obviously because I you know I'm not in the gym as of right now, but. I definitely got to be extra careful, too, because I got a newborn in the house. So I've been trying to maybe I wash my hands a lot and uh, make sure I'm protected with gloves and stuff like when I go out. So it's a good thing, though. Terrell, uh, you uh, actually we had uh, amateur fighter Keyshawn Davis on the show Tuesday, I think. And, you know, a lot of these Olympic fighters are going to have to make the decision whether or not they wait around for the Olympics or to turn pro. Um, based on your experience mm-hmm. and based on what that meant for you, uh, what advice would you give these fighters contemplating whether or not to turn pro based on having to wait? Is it worth the wait to get into the Olympics and to, and to, to do that? Or do you think that these guys should just turn pro? Uh, I can't really say for for if it's uh they should turn turn pro or not right now be, but for me, um, I actually I I went pro at 25, so I waited a little longer just to fulfill that dream because I felt like it was big for me. <clears throat> um, they had to talk with their team and you know their family and people, but it's definitely worth the wait in my opinion. And uh, them guys, 
I feel, you know, I feel bad for them because I know how hard they work. And I was actually out there with Keyshawn Davis and, you know, all these other guys. Um, I did a training camp out there with them and worked with some of them guys. So I know them personally. And um, I seen them putting the work in. He is sharp, sharp fighter. Um, you got Delonte, uh, you got De- Delonte um, Johnson, I believe. Mm. And he's from my gym. Actually, he he go, he was supposed to be going, but uh, a lot of guys, man. But I just think they just have to. It's worth the wait, though. That's what I think. That's what's up. Go ahead, Ness. Yeah. So uh, you're training with Manny Robles, right? Yeah. Yeah, we just had Estradita yeah. on, man. How was that? You know what I mean? Like uh, that that. He, that's you don't typically see that, right? Like you know, you don't really see the Mexican fighter training the black fighter. That's rare. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't look. I, I feel you, but I don't really look at it like that. He he, like family to me. Um, I've been with Manny for so long. We got so much history. I've been with him even before I turned pro, even before the Olympics. You know, so. It's just like one of them things. He the one who got me out here in California. And it was my first time ever being out here. I felt like it took my game to another level. And I I never left since. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now I'm a California resident. You know what I mean? So it's just uh, one of them things that worked out for me. Uh, you know, he, he got me in shape. Um, uh, gave me a chance. Gave me a shot. And. I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep rolling with it. When did that happen, though? Because I, I thought I seen your debut. I don't remember Manny. That's a new union or no? Um, yeah, he he wasn't he wasn't in because I because like in the beginning I was in Cleveland a little bit more, so I was training there. So you know it was like that. But I think maybe after like my fourth fight or something like that he'd been he'd been there ever since so, yeah, so we, just, we've been training together just that okay yeah so just to be clear you know we love yeah. manny like i said we just had Estrellita on we have manny on here a lot of times uh we we we're actually upset that andy did not go back to manny we know he has charles martin as well so i know he's a world-class trainer yeah. i mean he made magdaleno into a champion valdez into a champion andy ruiz mm-hmm. into a champion so you know, uh, I, I yeah. do not doubt the pedigree, um, you know, and the comment wasn't racial at all. It's just you don't really see that. Like, you've seen Floyd train Oscar, um, but it's like it yeah. sticks out. It, it really sticks out. You rarely see that. But no, that, I got you. I feel I like Manny you, isn't, he, he isn't also traditional Mexican, maybe? Like, I guess with this, well, I don't know, because Magdaleno yeah. and Valdez and Ruiz kind of favor each other. What you think? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it's just that for me, he he don't try to change my style up. He just add add little things to it, like maybe sitting down on my punches a little more. I remember in the beginning, I was a uh, more little bit more um, volume puncher instead of like committing to my shots and stuff like that. So uh, some of the things we changed and going to the body, but he let me keep he let me keep my style and. You know, because I, I kind of come from the old school boxing style with my coach back home, Renard Saffo. He just taught me, like, you know, behind the jab, fundamentals, keep your hands up, you know, stuff like that. So I kind of from that, from that style, you know. <clears throat> so, well, uh, Alex, again, how, how much uh, do you run? You mentioned, you, you, you know, you're running to maintain and, uh, you know, me and the guys here are always talking about is running important, how much you should run. What what what's a what's a good run oh, for you? Oh, before good you, road work. Before you answer that, champ, you need context. First of all, uh, you running for a twelve round championship level <laughs> fight. We running for three round exhibitions. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like for me, I think um, that's one of my that's one of my things. I always ran more than anybody in my um in my gym. Like I'm always the one that's running most. I probably could run a marathon if I wanted to, but I run most of the time, like two times a day. Um, I say about good eight miles a day. 
um, or sometimes 10. Damn. Damn, two to four, four, yeah. four, two, four or five mile runs. Wow. And what's your, what's your yeah. pace? What's your, mi- what's your mile pace? Uh, so most of the time, like maybe like eight or seven, seven um, minutes, thirty seconds or eight. Damn, he was for about that, to, for, yo, he was about for, to for scare me. Damn, he was about to scare me. I heard, up. I heard this. I was like, damn, you about to say sixes, champ? You running fast as hell? Oh no, 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 no. I, <laughs> I ain't doing. Hey, you like gonna that. win that marathon? Like <laughs> <laughs> so we got a few Shit. questions from the people, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, that we're going to throw at you before we uh-huh. let you go. Let's see. Get a refresh here. Looks like Intrigued, the Incredible in Atlanta says, Jerron Boots Ennis went on record stating that he is ready to fight all champions in the welterweight division. If Boots and Bud mm-hmm. fought, what happens? Uh, if Boots and Bud fought down Ooh. the road, who would win? <laughs> oh, that's a hard one, man. That's a hard one. Dang. Um, I have to... I don't know. I have to see it, man, because I, I ain't uh, Boots. One of the guys that I've been looking at, and he looked like the real deal to me. But um, we know um, Bud Savage, so we have to see. We have to see. I would love to just be a fan on that one. I can't even pick a winner. But if I had to, I'd probably go with Bud. All right, all right. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and ask, man, because you was 2012. You know Earl, and that's the fight the people want. Earl Bud. What, what do you think happens there? Or you on the fence? Yeah. No, I mean I'm gonna have to keep it real. With that's a 50 50 fight. You know what I mean? But I rock with my boy Earl. I ain't gonna cap. I think uh, I don't see I don't see nobody beating him. But it's a boxing. You have to. Anything can happen. Definitely. All right. We got Trey that says, how do you think a fight between Trout and Bud would go at 147? We know you just fought Trout, and I don't know if you know, but Trout just made 148 for his last fight, and he's campaigning to get down to welterweight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask for that one. No disrespect to Trout, but I think he on a – you know, he on the last stretch of his career, but still in his prime, I think um, he gets stopped by uh, Bud, right? Really. Okay, we got George Foster that says, uh, Who do you think has the best chance of beating Canelo at 160 and 168? Uh, I don't know about that one. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Shit, uh, it's it's definitely he definitely um got some people out there that give him some challenge. One sixty eight. Um, you got you got Benavides out there. You got Caleb Plant. I don't, I don't, I don't know his style. From what I've been seeing, he can handle just about anything. Canelo, calm in there. He's in the pocket. Go to the body. He real hard to hit. So. It's not too many things I've seen he wasn't doing right. So it's really hard to say if he's beatable right now. I mean, everybody beatable, but it's hard to say who would beat him. Uh, got to ask, man. Got to put you put your back against the wall. Who's your number one in terms of pound for pound? Because it, it always gets tossed around, whether it's Canelo, Vasil, or Crawford. Uh, no. Um. You talking about between them or just my personal? Nah, nah, just your personal pound for pound. Like, who's that number one for you? Uh, shit. I can't really, can't really say. I got it's a lot of guys I look at, but I can't just pick one person. You know what I mean? A lot of my favorite fighters then retired right now, so I have to, I have to. Um, hmm. It looked like. Right now, to be honest, it looked like Canelo probably at the top right now, and then Crawford up there too, and um, you know Spence. That's I I can't pick one. For sure, for sure. But still, I like I, I like him, but uh, I like him. He he doing his thing. He knocking people off, but uh, he never was like my top pick. But he up there too. 
All right, we got Brandon Cincinnati that says, any talks of a fight between you and Tony Harrison? Oh, I mean, it's something that something I wouldn't mind. They would they they never like mentioned any mentioned it yet, but um that fight makes a lot of sense. Cleveland versus Detroit, me and Tony both, you know, uh fought he was ex champion, so that fight makes a lot of sense for me. Definitely. I like that fight. Good fight. Um we got Jemmy in yeah. Delaware says Jamel versus Laura. Who you got? Why? Jamel versus Laura. Um uh, uh I, I, I probably would. That's it. That's it. Laura's still slick even though he's getting older. Um he's not using his legs as much, so I think if he uh Jamel probably got a good shot at beating him at this time right now. All right. And um looks like Josue Boxel says, would you go up to 160 and fight Boo Boo Andre for the WBO strap? Yeah, I definitely would go up to 160 um, after I take care of the business at 154 because my goal, <clears throat> and I, I think a lot of these, there's a lot of competition at 154, and I want to go against the top guys at that at this weight, and then, you know, I of course, I'm going to get the belt. Then I'll move up after that. For sure. Last one, champ, is... Belt uh, or belts. I'm sorry. No problem. Yeah. Belt or belts. Yeah. Uh, last one is from Teddy uh, Bly the Wood. He says, being from Cleveland, I always wanted to see you and Willie Nelson or you and Tony Harrison, Ohio versus Michigan, happen are those fights possible? Well, you said Harrison is possible, and you yeah, like it. What about Nelson? Definitely Harrison possible. Uh, Nelson, we come from the same gym in Cleveland. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? So, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't rush into no fight like that with him. Um, I don't think. I don't think me and him will fight. He moved up to 162 anyway. So, but <clears throat> we we just kind of like stable mates for like eight years. So, nah. All right. Well, Mr. Geisha, that was all our questions, man. We want to thank you, obviously, for coming on the show. Uh, you know. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, I was going to say, Trout is also a friend of this show. You know he won that rematch. He said he did, but then after that, like, he ain't, he ain't really mentioning it no more. Then he went down. So, yeah, he, he definitely I ain't making down. 147. Let's be real. <laughs> I can't make 147. So, 154, is that's it. But, um. He a good he a good dude outside of fighting. You know, we in the ring, it's all it's all work, but he a good dude, you know what I'm saying? And I felt like you know, I whooped him but he <laughs> went in in charge of the judges and shit like that. So yeah, I mean you know, so I love it. You whooped him. I love it. it I love it, yo. <laughs> oh man, uh <laughs> Terrell, man, thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate your time. If you can, please not give it any social media for those that aren't finally who can do so. And once again, man, thank you, man. It was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate y'all yeah, for, for uh, reaching out to me. Yeah, y'all can, can get me at, you know, my first and last name, Terrell Gachet, on all platforms, um, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All right, Terrell. Well, thank you so much. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Up-and-coming contender, Terrell Gachet, former Olympian and uh, really on the cusp of a big fight. Um, you know, so many good names in that 54 pound division, like Genesis, Jason Rosario, uh, you know, he didn't even mention Williams, right? Uh, that was a good question too. How much cash does Williams have coming off a loss? If they offered you that, would you take that? I love that he wants the Harrison fight. We had Harrison on and, you know, Harrison thought like it was going to be difficult to get a fight, but he's also a little big headed. I don't know, would Harrison take the Geisha fight, right? He thinks he's like you know, up there now and, and, and only wants to go forward. But, uh, man, that, that that's such a exciting division right now, man. Uh, it's, you know, Patrick Texeria just uh, upset Adamas. You know, yeah. um, Jason Rosario I, I, I'd upset like that fight, Julian right? Williams. Tony Harrison, gosh, I, I'd like to see it. And, um, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's the whole Michigan, uh, uh, Ohio thing. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, – uh, that would do good. And, you know, as far as Tory Harrison maybe having a little bit of a, too much of a 
grande cabeza. Uh, sometimes you gotta you gotta take a, a you know a nice tough fight in order for you to make us believers again. You know what I'm saying? To get that get get back up there. You know, sometimes you you don't just go back up. You know. Yo, Ness or Mario or Doomy, whoever's the uh, you know guest producer. I need some guest uh, scheduling so I could you know find out who these people are. You know, I'm the casual fan. I ain't trying so to learn you, on the so job. So you're saying you want to receive an email, a text, to know, an email to know or to know who's gonna be on this show? Yeah, we could oblige you with that, brother. We just you could you know. oblige me. I look out for that. Yo, you know. Ness has got this thing straight. I promise you're gonna get your you're gonna get your wish come true because Sooner yo, we got thinks, guests right? <laughs> I got guests on my phone scheduled for like the next two weeks. Like, I I I, I, I didn't just, have what? uh this one on. I, I so many coming in that sometimes so, I, yeah that that's the only thing is sometimes you can overlook them because you get a few at a time. You know what yeah. I mean? So you I've know, done that too but but it's it, you know and that's obviously not Ness's fault but uh you know at the end of the day it, it works more times than it doesn't. Yeah. It's sad though. I honestly thought that the way that I was sending you the invites, it was populating on your on your calendar. Like for instance, if you send me an email and I open it on my mat and it's got a date, that shit automatically is like you yeah, it does that it? for me now. That's what it does now. But at like at the very beginning, it was just another email. Now it goes to the top and it actually presents me uh with uh That's just option. a click. Just all I got to do is push one button. So every time I see Nestor Gibbs, I just push the button and boom, it's on my phone. It's yeah, on my phone, like it's on my buy, computer, my iPad, everything. Right, like when you buy an airline ticket um, once upon a time. Exactly. Right? So, Doomy, um, Doomy just don't use his phone, so that's never happened. But, you're crazy. Uh, I'm on it, champ. And Doomy listen. plans to live in the woods in the future once we got to get that <laughs> You see, you see, I got you. Uh, save you see, save I got me a spot, Khabib, bro. You know what I'm saying? Doomy save don't want, Doomy don't want that life, man. We was talking about that the other day. He like, no, man, what are you talking about? He don't want that life, y'all. He don't want, <laughs> he don't want end, end of the world Yo, any, life. Anybody see that tweet I sent about Amir Khan hitting towards uh, yeah, retirement? Yeah. That ain't no yeah. tweet, man. Y'all gotta wake up. I be, oh, you know what? I sent that directly to Mario. He was supposed yeah, to add that it. Yeah, I was gonna put that in the note. You know what happened? I, I know why he ain't added because why would he want to talk <laughs> about a mid con saying he don't want to fight no more? Yeah, but also in the same breath, Ryan Garcia was talking about a mid con comment. So exactly. that's like Adrian Bonas. No, no, that was supposed like to be in the notes Bonas too. Haney. That was oh, supposed Ryan to be in the notes too. Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia, a mid con. That's as big a fight as Adrian Haney. Bro Yo, you you learning right now, Cash. I told y'all, man. That we, can't, we can't keep calling yo, that's, this that's Cash. That's coming man. from the three-point doomy. Yo, <laughs> he's like, yo, he, he went outside yo. the Cash box. Yo, and yo, watch Ryan. Watch Ryan show you that with him, Con Cassell. Hell yeah. And I hope Dion, uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya is listening. You mean like in the Mexican market, American market, and stuff like that? I'm Con, talking about Con global. did six hundred thousand with Canelo. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, I mean, yo, off the bat, since let's 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 hype, let's pretend that that fight was this Saturday, and we are gonna preview which one. It. Ryan Garcia, Amir Khan. Oh, this Saturday prediction. This, this is a big fight for 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 Garcia. Um, I, the, the biggest issue I have with the fight is that um, he's never been on this level. You know, I would have liked that, maybe like I, not that I would have liked, but like you know, if 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 I could have gone through his resume and at least seen Lenares. No, there. that's it. That's it. That was that. That's, that's all you needed was that sentence. That one sentence. He's he's not on that level. You said it. He uh, yeah, he ain't a believer yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the name that's gonna make everybody a believer. Look, I'll tell you right now. He Is that he ain't got no fight. name? I'm gonna, I'm gonna break no it down name. like just like Enrique said. This fight's happening this Saturday. Right. Ryan Garcia has made the biggest mistake of taking this fight way too soon. Amir Khan is is not this is a levels type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like and and, and just like Ness said, Ryan Garcia never been on that level. Bro, and so right like you pick your boy because it's him. chinny. They could I get him. I was about him. to say that. No, Are you no. picking no. off a skill or limelight? They pick no, they pick listen, Ryan right now. Ryan Saturday, Khan does not go down. Listen, Ryan picked Amir. I sent you out a tweet and I said this is a show. I know. 
Ryan picked the mid because Eddie picked the mid because Eddie Reynoso's a trainer. He's seen a tape. But Amir of, also said something about him too, though. Yeah, Eddie he did. Reynoso seen a tape of Danny left hooking him to death. And what's what's Ryan's specialty? Left, left hook. hook. <laughs> Yo, your boy, that before the, bro, the show? your boy, bro, Amir Khan going to do the spin on this one, bro. Nah, he going to be looking like Eric Morales. Is he faster than the fast guy? You know what I'm saying? Because your boy is known for his speed. He's faster yep. than him. He's oh, faster. Than him. I, nah. And Amir Khan is going to go in there and try to show off and say I'm faster still, and he's going to get hit with that fucking left hook, and it's going to be over. I'm going to feel sad for you. This is going to no, be a no, sad listen. day. Look, Is in my he, sound bite, in my intro, when it says he's gonna come to fight, that was Amir Khan's voice. I said, Amir Khan, what are your expectations when you face Chris Algieri? And he said, I'm gonna he I'm expecting him to come to fight, but he it's it's different when he's in the ring with me. My jab is is not like his jab. That's a like a two thousand and fourteen, maybe even 13 Amir Khan. We are now six years later, 2020. It's a different Amir Khan, a very wealthy Amir Khan yeah. who don't have that same hunger. And that was the comeback Amir Khan after a Canelo loss, I think. No, no, no. It was before that. But it was before that. But here's the thing, okay? If the if the question was it makes the most money is Amir for, Khan for... faster than if Amir Khan, you know, back in 2014-15 is faster than Ryan Garcia, the answer is absolutely yes. Astoundingly yes. 2020 Amir Khan, yeah, they're probably about the same speed in, in terms of hands. Uh, but 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 this is a much different fight. Like, Ryan Garcia, is he going to, what, is he going to bang this Saturday? Bro, where is do he you gonna see take Amir Khan winning? Is he going to take him into a situation winning? where he, uh, honestly, where do, I think where, he outclasses him. Uh, well, okay, explain to me what the I think outclassing that, happened. I think Where does that, the outclassing happen? I think happen? that the same type of fight we saw with Lamont Peterson without the holding, honestly, I think he, he does whatever he wants with them. Man. So you say Amir Khan's still that same Amir Khan? Uh, no, what I'm saying is Ryan Garcia is not Lamont Peterson yet in terms of, uh, you know, experience, in terms of, uh, you know, being able to adjust. Because to be able to adjust you have to have that experience, you know. And Amir I Khan, don't know, I don't think Ryan Garcia is going to bring anything Amir Khan hasn't seen. Ryan Ryan scored two knockouts in the last two fights. He's super fast. He's got youth on his side, and he's got the better trainer, Amir. He's got a corner. Uh, yeah, Amir. Amir doesn't have a trainer. A he builds a trainer every time he fights. Like he, bro, he's that's, training that's with the guy that knocked your boy out, good. bro. And his corner but, will be advised. I'm sure. With the intelligence of Canelo Alvarez, that's the only issue. Look, I actually love this segment, uh, uh, Cash. I think that we should probably do this more often until we get fights. We we should just make up fights and just start we breaking them down. That would be fun. Fight. Yeah, that would so, be fun. To I'm gonna say it's a tough fight, and I'm gonna give it to Ryan Garcia mm, by the distance. Maybe a 12th round knockout. TKO. Bro, he 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 stops them mid rounds. Uh-huh. All y'all's hardcore licenses. Yo, the revoked, problem, bro. the problem that none of y'all even factoring in is that Ryan's one thirty five. Amir's a full blown welterweight, man, for a long man. time. Ooh. Y'all forgetting that, so it might be yeah, a, a if if Ryan wins, it'll be by decision. But knockout might be hard because he's fighting a dude that's two divisions above him, plus gonna weigh in heavy. Bro, on you could have had three hundred pound Amir Khan. He would have still got stretched, bro. A chin is a chin. That, he don't got one. Said. No, he don't got defense. He he he's his chin isn't isn't as bad as people think. Where so we're he reaching matchmaking that because uh, Ryan Ryan is way. He would suck him is down. Is Ryan too. is Ryan Ryan? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, Ryan sound good, but he out here capping. You want to fight a mid, but he 47. You want to fight tank, but he across the street. You know what? You don't want to fight Haney though. Haney got to wait. Haney got to wait for in four that fights. Same arena with you. Exactly. Haney in the ring. Yeah. Haney in the ring saying you ain't no champ. Invited. But Damn. whatever. That was dope when that happened. Yeah, I would like to do this again. I would like to 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 come Fancy up with matchups match and the, up. yeah, and Fiction. just kind of break them down and and that would be fun. Ryan I needs mean. to worry about Tank first. They need to handle all that smoke at thirty five. Tiafimo, Tank, Roly, Devin. Mad Ooh, people bro. out there, bro. Roly should fight. Roly and Ryan. Roly an animal. 
Roly mm-hmm. ain't fought nobody to be no animal. Fuck out of it. Easy to look like an animal bro, when you're nah, killing nah, fucking Nah, I'm talking cubs. about, bro, in the, in, in the gym, in the gym. It, Easy to no. look like an animal when you out here killing uh, little fucking uh, mice. <laughs> bro, I'm trying to tell you, man. He, he got, he got he a get, little domesticated kitten in his house killing mice, and he calling it a lion. Get out of here. <laughs> we got to wait. We got to wait till he step up, bro. Who he fought? Who he fought? He looked good. That's why I threw him in the mix. But we ain't gonna we ain't gonna start acting like he about to beat the top right now until he show he could beat the top. Bro, he sparred. He sparred. Ask Teofimo Lopez. Bro, what, kind of, what kind of animal? What kind of animal role he is? See, bro. a lot of these guys is behind the scenes, bro. They sparring they ain't get and they sparring, shy Baba. Sparring and sparring, bro. Sparring, I, I, sparring. I say, say what you say, champion. So. So before we go to uh, callers, we'll inter- inter- interject uh, another topic real quick. Uh, the decision to postpone Joshua Pulev is not official, but it could come in the next few days, according to Hearn. Uh, the target date would be July 25th or later, which obviously that's you know likely to get pushed back as well at this point. Um, if Joshua, however, Hearn did say if Joshua can only fight once this week uh, this year, he wants that against Fury. Uh, this is kind of based off the show that we had earlier, but uh, let me ask you guys if. If we could only have one fight this year, and I'm not saying what makes sense, or I'm saying you personally, what would you want? Wilder, Joshua, Fury, make one fight. What fight should we get by the end of the year? I'm going to go with uh, Wilder, Fury, two. Three. Three, rather, three. Yeah. The trilogy. Do me. If Wilder, Fury, Joshua all get one fight, who I want? Yeah, Yeah, out of that three. You can only see one fight between that mix. I'm going with... uh, um... Fury, Joshua. Just Fury because Joshua. I want, just because I want my man to be super healthy. Coronavirus has passed by then. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, you know, bro, that's why that, Wilder for- lost. He had the coronavirus going into the fight. Nobody knew because he was one of the first to get it. That's why he was weak and shit. Now we know because we know the symptoms Listen. and we know that you know. I was watching this new thing on the news, and the kid was like, you know, he caught it, and uh, you know, it's just, it just feels like the flu, but times ten. Like you can't get up out the bed. You, you know, you you have no strength. Yeah, yeah. bro, like that. I, I I'll say this. Look, in in all honesty, but I'm trolling I know this though. I'm happen. trolling. I'm trolling of on course. that. Super of course. Tro- I, I I know. I know. Listen, if, listen. If we could only have one fight between these three guys. I would honestly would rather have Joshua and Wilder fight. Uh, that's a that? fight that I don't think that you know is likely, but I think it's the most important fight moving on to decide that number two to decide who really belongs in there with Fury right now. <laughs> you know, we had an argument. argument about whether or not <laughs> uh, Joshua was still considered. I mean, it was yo, before, you know what, man? But, but I like that Joshua point. Wilder up. He brought up a good point because I see that being pushed by 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 the British promoters. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that way they could just kind of like have have that title on their side, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh. And, 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 it, and it to me it solves like look, no matter how great Fury's looked and no matter what he's done, the fight was Wilder Joshua. I'm not over it. You know, does it mean as much as it did before? No, but I'm not over that fight. That's still a huge promotion. Where were, where were Wilder and, and Joshua fight though? Like, where, where were they be going? Wherever they J want. Question. Nah, so nah. Ba- so we, the truth we is got- that Wilder still did pay per view. The thing is, I don't think that you could bring Wilder right into. I mean, maybe, bro. Maybe in this day and age, you know, what if if AJ turned around and offered him a pay-per-view fight in America? I mean, co-promotion, obviously, because they don't do pay-per-view over here, you know. Yeah, I see it then. And then after that fight, they'll be banking on AJ to win, and then they'll have their super fight in Britain with the two two British superweight fight. I see that totally. Or Wilder wins. And the third fight means so much more than it does yeah, now. I, it's a win-win thing, and then, like I really do see them because that what bigger fucking fight? Yeah, is, but for like, Eddie and them, why would Britain. Eddie? Why would Eddie? Eddie's looking at it. Why would we give Wilder a shot at four belts? They still because know he's maybe dangerous. they see they see something now. Maybe nah, they see. Bro, they dude, see dude, dude, you train maybe, people. Maybe man. they get. Maybe they get Anthony Joshua to get huge and shit and like overpower. Mm. 
That's you know, the only way they get they that saw fight. The if they saw the chicken armor, something. man. Bruh, gonna try to Mikey go. Garcia seen something. Let's not act like just because Fury did it, everybody could do it. Mm, mm, mm. But again, you know, maybe they do see something hypothetical. Or maybe they do see something where they rather have Fury. Maybe they see that in Fury. And that's mm. the reason why they're asking for step aside money. So they could be like, yo, we beat Fury. You couldn't. You now have to wait again because Fury wants the rematch. And then yeah. that goes on and yeah, on. That's and what's going to happen. X, they X Wilder out. That's that dangerous route right there. That's that dangerous route. But I prefer to see the third fight just to keep it safe, just to keep it all in perspective. We still have a number one. There's still two people at number battle number two. No, no one knows who's A or B at this point because they both have a one on their record. And, uh, you know, Fury has to be rep- represent no, that, that belt. That would be so yeah. good. That would be so good if AJ and Wilder fought. Because that, that if Wilder wins, you know, and it's going to just boost his confidence back up. He'd be in a great, you know, great mental state. Um, I just don't I see think, why uh, they throw him that fight. Like, if you AJ, why are you throwing him that fight? That's only way I see it. it, bro, is if they really, really saw something, and and now they're just gonna be like, you know what, we got a game plan. I mean, we we, I, we listen, honestly got to be we, real quick. We got to be honest. Uh, uh, AJ came back, and he didn't go out there to try to kill Andy or nothing like that. He stuck to a game plan. And he won, so I'm pretty sure this next fight he'll he'll stick to a game plan, and and he'll follow through with it. It's just a matter of if they really saw blood or not. Well, look, I mean, I, I I think that there's still business in that fight. So you know, I think that you know if they wanted to come back and say, look, we're gonna come back. We trying to we trying to make our mark again in America. We want to fight Wilder because it's a common opponent. You know, we want to show what we could do. I could see all that. I could see big business in it. So you know, and I and I could see myself watching it. I would I wouldn't not watch it. I don't I don't I don't feel like I would talk negatively about it. Um, so yeah, I just don't feel it's it's probable. But but I, I like the the you know the the, the thought of it. Storyline is nice. Mm-hmm. Yo, just uh, real quick, one of the notes that we had uh, Netflix's mini series on middleweight Carlos Monzon. Uh, is now streaming. So uh, obviously we're in the situation that we're in. All of us are looking for uh, things to kill time. I think it's a 13-episode miniseries. Damn. And from what I've read, uh, shout out to – it was Cliff Rold, a uh, great writer. Um, you know, He had a breakdown of it, and uh, he said it was kind of similar to uh, the People vs. O.J., uh, in terms of productions, and there were some parallels between them two. And if you ever saw that People vs. O.J. Simpson uh, on FX, it was an amazing series. So, um, you know, uh, Carlos Monzon has a really crazy story. So uh, definitely go check that out. Yo, uh, let's open up the phone lines, I guess. I mean, we got a couple of other news and notes. We, did, did we touch on the Mikey thing or should we? Nah, I was about to not. say. We what did happened? not. What happened? Because well, I'm very interested in talking about that real quick. Cause really? I, I mean, I feel as though he, sh- he should. Damn, I'm not even on the news and notes list. Like, what's Chad, that? like, that's, that's on the title on YouTube, though. Chad. Oh, I didn't even and know I, we were on YouTube. I'm and all I, over the and place. I, and, on, I the, and I sent it to the and I sent it to the pre pro too. Nah, you didn't send that to the pre pro that I'm Chad, in. You cash man. See it's why Mike left now. He like, yo, where my info? <laughs> <laughs> he said, nah, I'm in my feelings now. <laughs> he actually nah, but I do it. So. so what's up with Mike Garcia, man? Listen, uh, champ. Uh, what do you mean, Mikey? 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 They saying Mikey need to go down. His brothers. Yeah, his Mike, brothers are saying the same thing, bro. It's not like we ain't his been brother here. and father. Uh, both said that he should consider coming down to one forty. Uh-huh. Um, and, and and that's strange too to me. Like, here's the dynamic that's added to it: is that at this point, what is Mikey's? I'm not gonna call it a fascination or an obsession. But if everybody is telling him to move down, even the people in his own and, – and it's not like these are trainers that he you know, doesn't really know very well or, or managers that could be after money. These are the people that are closest to him and that ultimately have his back 
throughout anything. So um, they wouldn't lie to him. You know what I mean? So it's it's a weird situation to me why he would continue uh, in the face of that. But again, I'm not. You know, he's a fighter. He has every Bro. right to yeah, campaign but whatever I'll he wants. I tell you what's not factoring Manny. in is that he's 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 picking specific welterweights. You know. Yeah, and Manny, Manny yeah, Manny's money. not a Manny's not Earl. Earl started at at, at at 52 in the amateurs. So Manny isn't that. Jesse isn't that. Jesse started his career at 130. So and, and even Jesse gave him a hell of a fight up until he got you know clippy clip clip figured out clippy, clipped. Yeah, but like you know you you start to see like you know you start to have a gauge, man. And let me tell you something, bro. As a coach, especially as a brother too, you know what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure that Robert doesn't get his emotions mixed up with the two. I'm pretty sure that if he feels like he should move down, it's because it's not worth it. And at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be fighting tougher guys, young guys. And, um, I mean, it's just it's why, why, I mean, how much more fight you got in you? I'm not saying that, you know, Mikey's in retiring anytime soon, but I mean, you want to be picking the fights that are going to, you know, benefit you and, and, and not put your body in so much, uh, you know, well, as long, pressure. as long as we know Mikey, from stepping up, he only been calling out big, big names, right? So who would he have next that's dangerous for him? And then who would he have next that's um equal? That would be Manny Pacquiao, right? I mean, that's so the that's the non threat. That's who he's fishing for. That's the non threat. That's the non threat. So who else? Is there another non threat? Uh well, forty seven, um uh, Danny hmm. Garcia. Nah, Danny yeah. Garcia. Danny big. Garcia. Danny Garcia. Garcia will, he's big, bro. Battle of the Garcia has changed. But, but, I love that fight. But one thing about Mikey, again, you you are able to see skill. He displays skill, kind of like Terrence Crawford. But he takes a little more of a hit, and then, you know, halfway in or early, he'll show it. But again, Spence, he didn't have that, so... Uh, I think somebody who is heavy handed, he's going to reserve everything and probably not throw much punches. So, you know, I, I, I remember watching an HBO show where Mikey was the co main event. And I think Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was the main event. And I remember, I think it was at 130, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he really used his size in that fight. And I don't remember the opponent. It wasn't anybody super, you know, sexy or anything like that uh, in terms of names. But he used to use his size in a very specific way. It wasn't like he had this extreme height, but at that si- at that weight, it he did have some height. You know, it wasn't like he was super strong, but at that weight, he was fairly strong. You know what I'm saying? So it was a situation where as he moved up, it's not like his skills diminished. Like this is the same Mikey Garcia. He is as talented as he's ever been. But it is a tough road, and that's why guys like Floyd Mayweather, Canelo, you know, these guys deserve Pacquiao, deserve all the credit in the world because they continue to to leap over these obstacles presented to them at higher weight classes and allow their um, skill set to to really be the the only factor in the fight, taking away size and and reach and and weight advantages and strength advantages, and so. Um, it's a tough thing to do. If Mikey says he's ready for it, then I'm going to trust him. He's ready for it. I think he'd be better off at 140 for a little bit, um, you know, and, and then coming up and seeing if his body progresses in a certain way. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's his call, right? It's the fights. I mean, they got to be worth it, you know. They got to be worth it for him to uh, uh, jump jump, uh, and stay in there. And even so- – yeah, go ahead. So let's go back to the class, the weight, the division that, that his parents or his brother and his dad want him to go to. That's what, like, who's dominant in there? And then, you know, maybe they believe that he could dominate that division. So who who's the names that's in that division? Is that the 135? That's the well, light? He, belt, he's, light? he's on record saying he couldn't get a title shot uh, at that weight. So I... <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm not... super, super light. Uh, you got uh, Jose Carlos Ramirez. Uh, he the WBC. You know, we had him on. Champ, well-spoken, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he actually taught us a little bit about the fitness and the sodium and all that. I know you remember it, Cash. And uh, uh, you got Josh Taylor. Your man, Josh Taylor. Up from there. the United Kingdom. Yeah, from the United Kingdom. So, um, he was also on the show. I like, think. A week ago, right? Uh, no, that was uh, Jose Ramirez. Oh, we named was, Josh Taylor a couple. Yeah, yes, it was yes. it was Jose Ramirez that we had on, and we were talking about Josh Taylor uh, during that interview. 
So yeah, but it's a some, stacked division. Yeah, there's some good fights there. I mean, and even even if you're not fighting a champion, there's other good fights there. Obviously, he would he wouldn't probably take that route. But um, there's some good fights at Super Light. Um, is there like some star power, some star fights? I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me with that because I don't know if a Josh Taylor, Mikey Garcia does huge numbers or is that something that people really want to see? You know, the way I see it too, man, Mikey's kind of like uh, uh, kind of be looked upon now as like a guy that, you know, might be too much for this division. So, you know, how much credit we're going to give him in this division, you know what I'm saying, now that he's at welterweight and he's been the distance with Earl and – you know what I'm saying? He's done. He's done. He's he's done. He hasn't done terrible for you himself. You also so. got to factor in that one of the guys with two of the belts is his stablemate. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't even Jose, think of yeah, that. Ram- yeah, Ramirez. Yeah, Jose Ramirez. You're right. I, I man, and I was thinking of that fight the whole time. I was like, man, that's gonna be a, that would be a good fight. Like I just completely blew that off. <laughs> so it's like he's he's got uh you know a tough you know a tough um, situation that's super light. So. I don't know, man. Welter, um, who knows, man? I mean, look, can we get a stronger? You also got to remember, welterweight is where the money's at, anyway, man. With like, mm. what, what, well, that's, that's what Dumi had said. What, what, yeah. hundred and forty pounder is talking about getting, you know, two million plus for a fight? Nobody. And yeah, Danny that was what Dumi was that. saying. Welterweight. Yeah. Yeah, what to waste the money? He got the man. He got a. But can we see a, a stronger, bigger, more muscular Mikey? Can we get a stronger Mikey? You I mean, know maybe what I'm it's I mean, genetics. Look, he was having man. trouble. Maybe that's he just how tr- his body looks. Maybe it's just genetics. I'm just saying because you know he's gonna have to be the stronger guy. You, all these guys are gonna be taller, and he's had difficulty with the taller guys too. You know, I mean, Lipinets wasn't too tall, but he. You know, he gave him a good fight. But, you know, Robert Easter, uh, I think they fought at 139, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't got it up. But uh, 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 what, it was, I know it was the 138, 139 or, 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 or whatnot. I thought it was but, for the 135 title. What was it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I might Maybe be wrong. I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Nah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He enough. unified Robert Easter yeah, for 135. Yeah, unified. That's right. Yeah, okay, it was a unification. So, you know, he had trouble with him, you know, and, 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 um, Putting him away, and he he's not that much a, known for for being an aggressive fighter or a big puncher, and and you know I already knew that him going up and up and up, he was gonna experience a, a little yeah, more trouble. Yeah, but Robert Easter's durable, and he's huge for that weight. He's tall. That, that's what I'm tall. saying. That's what I'm saying. So gauging it off his his size, which most welterweights are gonna be around that tall, if not even super welterweights at times. Yeah. yeah, I gauged it in that matter where I was like, okay, I'm seeing him have trouble with Robert Easter, and 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 imagine when he gets into the true welterweights and the true people who wear that weight, you know, all the time, it, it, he was gonna have trouble. Um, so I'm asking for him to be a little stronger, maybe be a more more Mike Tyson esque. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Maybe he'll get a better result. On on shots because I mean when he lands with that right hand with that you know that step in hard right hand he he has the power to knock you out but um, I seen him hit these guys at welterweight with other shots that you know normally at a lightweight a super a super light you know he he would he would have done damage he's not doing it at welter yeah well once he jumped up from light to super light the KOs dissipated and that's according to the pro boxing career of his forty one bouts. Yeah, but it's right. also a level of opposition, man. Right. And the level is where the money is at. So he's got to fight level opposition fighter, the competitive fights. He can't pick no names. And that's probably where his dad and his brother fear. Like, yo, let's let's make money at the, you know, the lightweight. Let's keep it real. You going after millions and legacies, but that'll fade away, which I believe it'll fade away unless he starts hurting people at that weight. Look, man. He's out. You know, there's only one way I think that you know his father and and his brothers telling him to go down. That that they they must feel like he's taking a little too much punishment. You believe that he took a little too much against Vargas? I mean, yeah, he was taking shots too. But like you know, you're taking you're taking it's too many fight, shots. Dummy. It is it is a fight, <laughs> but he's taking shots that he didn't take before, and um, I think exactly that's the, that's the concern with the with the brother and the pops, you know. That that's highlight shout exactly out, what out you to, just said. Senior. Shout out the senior too, man. Exactly, and, and highlight well, exactly what you just said. It a, is a fight, but he wasn't getting hit like he had been hit before. 
He was also in there with Vargas, though. Vargas is very determined. Yeah, no, that that's fair. It, the, the only problem I have here is that, like, look, it, at some point, it's going to get harder and harder to make 140. The longer he stays at 147, the tougher it's going to be. You know, you get older and it's tougher to drop those pounds. Uh, your body gets acclimated. You know what I mean? So um, some of these fighters that are at 135 that are going to be moving up at some point, you know, how far off are some of those matchups that we wanted to see? You know, Lomachenko, Mike Garcia, stuff like that. Uh, you know, those fights may not ever happen, period. And yeah. they certainly won't happen if they don't get to a, a particular weight. But at the same time, Mikey's f free to make his money. Like where where are we seeing this super fight besides Manny Pacquiao with, for Mikey? Like I mean, is he really gonna fight Terence Crawford? Is he really gonna fight a rematch for Earl Spence? Is that is that I what mean, they're well, looking to do? Is he got like two fights with Crawford and amateurs. Why not fight him for a belt? If Crawford and him started you know in and around the same weight. He's got I mean, options, bro. He's got options. You know, you you the the tone of your voice sounds like you are saying like. Where else is he going to go? Like, bro, this is a dude with, like, three options easy on the table. All right, so, like, if, what you're, if, you're, if you're Terrence Crawford, I mean, he could fight want... Danny. He could fight Broner again. He could fight Manny. I mean, he could fight mad people. For, for how much, though? Because, like... He could fight, fight Devin. Danny? He could fight Devin. They want that fight. They did face-offs. The Zone wants that fight. Eddie wants that fight. He could fight Devin. He could fight Regis Program. You somebody. said Broner again? Why would that make zero sense? Bro, Broner's well, still Broner, Broner. Broner may be able to, you know, call talk about he can come back off that win. On God in them. On God in them. <laughs> I know oh, who man. God big, in them big is. Fight, big fight at 147. I like the biggest fight I see. And like, and I'm talking about money, money, money fight. Money, the other money, yeah. Yeah, it's that Manny Pacquiao fight. But Terrence Crawford, like, if I'm Terrence Crawford, like, what, a, what am I coming? Obviously, he's going to be the A side, right? Terrence Crawford, of course. To who? Yeah. So, to Mikey? Yeah. I mean, Dude, yeah. this is PBC. I would think so. this, oh no, uh, he's a free agent, right? Uh, uh, Mikey yeah, because I was going to say Eddie and and uh, Bob Arum, they don't really do business, or do they? Yeah, they doing business. They, they, all right. They, 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 so they then they doing all right together. Like, what kind of credit we give it? Like, do uh, like it would be, I guess, a great. Um, barometer or gauge or whatever you want to call it to to to, to compare it to Errol Spence um, Junior's fight, I guess. But like, if I'm Terrence Crawford, do I want that fight too? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like, there's What's... options obviously for him there, but like, look at it through the through the options you're, you're giving me. Like, do they really want that fight? Exactly. Yo, what about a Garcia? What, what are you I'm talking what about, about a... bro? Like I'm Garcia, on, like, Garcia. Like... Why won't they take that fight? What are you talking about? Just saying, like, what? What's it? Is he a threat to Terrence Crawford? How do How do they look at it? Is you know who what I'm a threat? What are, what are we gonna? If I'm yeah, if I'm Terrence Crawford, like, what do I gain? Like, where's the threat level? Does he wash him? Does he feel like he can wash him? Bro, you know what, what you mean? What yeah. do you gain? You what the fuck? Did you not see the big business that Mikey just did in fucking Frisco? Texas? Oh, Frisco. Basically, what I'm asking, I know that. Ness. I'm saying this is is the risk worth the reward? That's what I'm saying. It's the yeah, risk. That, well, who's I, I who's the risk? Who's the risk? Like, I mean, Terrence Crawford's the one that he he would risk to lose his title if 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 Mikey Garcia, you know, uh, uh, upsets him. So it's like I'm I'm more asking like, is it how worth much does he gain versus how much he could potentially lose? Like, there's more yeah. on the line for Crawford than there is for Garcia in that Man, fight. You, know you what I'm guys saying? are insane, bro. This is ah, bro. yo, Mikey like, Crawford. If he can make that fight, he better make that fight. That's a big fight for him. Yeah, well, yeah, because he's in the situation that he's in, but but Bro, it was a big fight for Why Earl. is it so big? Where does this happen? What you mean? Where does it happen, bro? Didn't you just see the business Earl did with Mikey? Where where does it happen for you? Where does this fight become a huge fight? I mean, Texas. They're gonna go to Texas again. They could go to yeah, Omaha, but, but that's still not a. But he's he's saying, where's that money? Money like Manny Pacquiao. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what he's talking about with Garcia. But but to me, the the question is, or not the question, but the 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 perception is this: If Mikey's at 140, he he's kind of a boss at 140. At 147, uh, he's not. Like it's just not. He he's his the potential money ain't the outweighs same what 40, the reality man. is. Uh, that's just my perception. I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying at 140, he could be a boss. He could be dictating terms, you know, and, and at this point, he's not there yet at 147. And, uh, you know, he's got to be he one of the top guys. Hey, to man, he was the A-side in the Vargas fight. He got paid $7 million. Like, what more of an A-side you want, bro? 
fights. Bro, but that I said I said he's got to be the top fighter. I'm talking about the top fights. The top fights. Every Bruh, top fight. Vargas is, is a top fighter. Vargas is top 10, and, and it's plenty of welterweights that couldn't do what, what, what Mikey did to Vargas. Plenty. Man, you're trying to turn this conversation into, like, you know, what that means. Like, I'm saying, yeah, Vargas is a great fighter, and I give him all the credit in the world, but you're saying that there's no difference between uh, Vargas and Thurman? Or of, Vargas and Spence? Of course, but he's coming off a loss. Of course, but he's coming off a loss. He ain't supposed to be fighting those guys right now. But I don't think he gets wins against any of those guys. Like, period. So what does he do I think he in the situation be, I, where he's I think fucking he can be one Thurman. and six? And, what? I think if think he's he good Thurman? if he's good enough, he could be Thurman. Thurman showed to be beatable. What you mean? If anybody's good enough, they could fucking win a fight. Like, what does that even mean? Like... Right now, who would you pick, Thurman or Mikey Garcia? I'm a Thurman fan, bro. But I, I uh, also I also know that until Thurman shows us that he's 100% back, he could be a wounded bird. You never know. Yeah, right now, you okay. can't even, like, opinionate on that. Because yeah, okay. how long he's been gone? It's but been put somebody else on the he's line. He's been gone since the Pascal out? fight, but he also was hurt, injured before that. Terrence. Do you think Mikey beats Terrence? No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah. I never said that. I don't that. know if he beats Tim. I, I never said that. I, all I, I, I never I never question. said that. All I said is it's a big fight for Terrence. See, the problem is y'all just thinking about fights. I'm thinking about getting Terrence to the next level. Y'all just thinking about fights. He's thinking about elevating and building. Yeah, uh, building uh, his building motherfucking profile. profile. Y'all didn't know he, he's like the biggest Bud fan around. Who? Y'all didn't Mikey? know that? Ness? Bro, because no, Ness. I, I want him to get the real fan. fights and he can't do it until he gets some certain fights. But anyway, let's open up the phone lines, man. Yes, sir. What about the minute, wait a minute. One last thing, though. A brief last thought. Like Teddy Atlas calling Triple G shot. Y'all believe him or not? Come on, man. We went shit. through this. We just watched Dervinchenko. We know he's shot. Mm. Nah, I still think it's a good fight, though. I still shot. think it's a Yo. good fight for four rounds. Triple Mark G, my words. Triple G. Mark my words. Return to the machine. Good. Good, good. Good. Return to the machine. Let's hope. Love it. I love it, bro. Can't Let's wait hope. then. Let's hope. These calls are brought to you by El Camino <laughs> Electrical crying. Services, experts in electric vehicle charging stations. For consultations and turnkey installation, visit us at El Camino Electrical Services.com. Remember to rate us five stars on iTunes. Going out to Stone Bone Boxing. Oh, no, actually, yeah, yeah. Well, let me see. Is that Stone Bone or Intrigue there? Oh, yeah, that's Stone Bone. What up? <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, yeah, put Mikey on the chopping block, man. We are, we, are, we can rally up, man, shoot down to Dallas, man, put a sellout Earl uh, backyard and then they keep. Then, then we're gonna see what, who ain't a big fight. When the dude come down there, sell thirty thousand tickets, damn near forty thousand in your old city. While you sitting around looking to fight, uh, I guess it's your mandatory. I said mandatory, but you looking to fight Danny? It's gonna be a decent fight in Brooklyn or Las Vegas or something. Probably do fifteen thousand or something. You know what I mean? We do that in Omaha. And shout out to uh, the Benavidez, man, because. They he Benavidez Benavidez is one of the reasons, Bud went from doing thirteen fourteen uh from thirteen fourteen thousand in Omaha to fifteen sixteen because they brought out like a he, they came in and, and brought themselves deep into the Hispanic culture. There is about one hundred fifty thousand Mexicans in Omaha, and they came with that energy from Arizona that bled into it, and they've been coming to the Bud fights ever since. You know what I mean, they would come sporadically, but after that fight, they've been there ever since. So. He's bigger and bigger out here, so shout out to them, man. They got that hood energy, that hood vibe that, that created a great environment, and it was a great knockout, even though it was late, but it was a great one. So put Mikey on the chopping block, man. We'll take that fight, man. That's a Like Ness said, that's a big fight, man. And if dudes don't want to do it, Mikey is like uh, Marquez, man. He's going to fight Floyd. He's going to fight Pacquiao. He's going to fight Bradley. So Mikey going to fight pretty much. All of the top welterweights at different times because he's going to cash out. And that's what he's in for, these big fights to get a big check and just keep doing building his Mikey Garcia brand. I'll catch y'all in the morning or tomorrow or whenever. Peace. All right. Yeah, man, I, I, I agree. I agree with some of that. Yeah, I agree, bro. That was a great um, analogy right? with Marquez. Yeah, yeah. Great analogy. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, boomerang Trey in the Bay. 
What up? Oh, uh, well, what up, Cass? What up, do me? Um, man, you you uh you didn't get my boomerang last night or this morning, man. And Mario, bro, I'm from California. I can speak a little Spanish, homie. I ain't gotta Google the word "mijo," man. No, I wasn't uh, talking about you, Trey. I wasn't talking about you. I was getting. You said that right text. after my comment, though. You said yeah. that right after my comment. I'm like, what? I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I'm sorry. I should have. I should have specified because I was getting texts at the same time. So you know what I'm saying? Like I, I wasn't directing that at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Ryan, lying like a motherfucker, man. He he gonna go through all the hoop, all the hoops and shit to fight. Uh, to tank. fight tank, yeah. I mean, man, man, the zone and like that—that that shit don't even going Come on, man. Uh, uh, I'm with you on that one. That's with him running from Devin like that. Uh, him against Khan, I don't know. I mean, what else? What else we had, y'all? He too small for Khan, I think, man. I don't right know. now, yeah, because the, the first thing I thought about was he's 135, and he hella immature, bro. Ryan hella immature. I don't, I don't. He he gonna take, I think he gonna be like the last bloomer. I, I like out of, the, uh, out of the prospects. I think he's gonna be the last one to bloom. Uh, what, what, what was the other topic, y'all? Oh, shit, I forgot. What, uh, what was Billy Joe Saunders he, losing the Canelo fight because of the domestic violence video he made. Um, hey, that motherfucker's stupid, ain't he? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a stupid motherfucker, <laughs> bro. I, I thought the shit was funny though, y'all. I laughed when I heard the shit <laughs> when I saw the video. I thought it was funny though, but he's still bro. dumb, this motherfucker. <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> All right, man, that's my call. All right, uh, that was interesting. I didn't think she was gonna say she found it funny. That's well, there you go. Uh, he asked some of the interview asked them right, like, "Yo, did you right, think yeah, people they call did. it you funny?" You think anyone? It Laughed. He's like, obviously not. Yeah. But so he was. He wrong. got one. He Shit. got one. Not, yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, he got two because you know Doomy laughed. Doomy had it on bro, repeat. Bro, bro, bro. bro, don't be saying that. Bro, no, no. Nah, nah, he can see. He can. He can try to slam my name against the wall, but I know what he know what it is. He know how I feel about it. I, I know I you watch. I, I know you like, watched it multiple I, times. I felt like he's just an idiot because you're you're not in a position where you can play around like that. You have millions of eyes, and these were not just eyes that you normally hang out with, like your friends that know you, that know that you don't mean that shit. You know what I'm saying? You got put in a bad position, and guess who fucked you? Yourself. So now he got he got the he got what he gets he gets, man. But uh, like I said, I'm not stat, I'm not crucifying the guy and uh, putting a tag on him. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Taggy tag. Let's go out to Steve in Chicago. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? What up, brother? All right. Listen to me now, man. You guys spent too much time with this Billy Joe guy. This guy, he's a fuck up after fuck up after fuck up. <laughs> I, this guy, I was pissed when Canelo, you know, I bet Canelo regrets this the zone deal because I think they're pushing him towards these fights uh, with the money they gave him. But that guy, man, he, he's he's a waste of just, like, human existence. He, he's, he does stupid shit after stupid shit, so I'm done, I'm done with that. But, uh, hey, man, Ryan is full of shit. You, you think with all them superstars that are on the zone already, Ryan's going to get a pay-per-view just because he brings Tank over? That, that guy's crazy. He he's like a little mature, like the other caller said. They ain't gonna give him no pay per view. If that fight's pay per view, Ryan's going to Showtime or Fox. That ain't gonna be on the zone. And then, like you said, that goes against their whole their whole uh, brand. Uh, but anyways, and then yeah, as far as Mikey, hey man, Mikey's gonna stay at one forty seven. There's no fights for him at those lower weights. I. Loma, I don't think Loma's going to stay at 135. I'm actually going to be surprised if we... It sounds like we're not even going to get that Teofimo fight. I think Loma's going to duck out of that somehow and go down to 130 or something. But we'll see. But Mikey, like, in order for him to make the money that he wants, he's got to stick around at 147. And I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing Mikey fight uh, Terrence or, or fight... Uh, you know, I don't know Pacquiao. You know who knows with him, but that'd be a good fight too. And you think Terrence really want would take that? Like, would want that fight? You know? 
over the guys he's been fucking. That'd be better than fucking Mean Machine. <laughs> Who the fuck? Mm. I mean, come on, man. Mikey's got at least a brand, a name. <clears throat> you know? It's at least an event with Mikey. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right, I'm done. All right, Steve. Man, Steve, Steve, came, Steve came with some fire tonight. Yeah, he said no bro. fuck shit right now, champ. Yeah, bro. He was loaded. <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, man. Is that, you know, yo, we, we giving them the right fights. They got to take them, man. They got to take them. What we got here is looking like California Zone. Mr. Info Joe. This portion of the show we call In the Know, presented by my brother. What's up, Yo, Joe? what's up, my boxing brothers? Hey, what, what up? up, Cass? Mario? Up? Linus Doomsday in the building? What's up, Jeez. Ness? Joe, I'm going to post up, my Joe? video on my Patreon so you can see my workout. I'm going to try to do one every day, Monday through Friday. Show my... You know, my routine throughout the day. Can you uh, yeah. put it in the Skype chat, man, on the Wednesday workouts? Workout Everybody's challenge. posting yeah, right Wednesday, there. Wednesday, I will, you know, put it. No, on no, it, ain't, it, it, it just called yeah, Wednesday, I, but it ain't got to be that. on Wednesday. How do I do that? Uh, shit, I, you know about all the technology better than me. <laughs> it's, in the, <laughs> it's, it's in the Skype. You see, had access to all of that, right? Just like yeah. I do, right? Nah, in the Skype? nah, he never called in on the Skype over there. Oh, it's on Skype, man. It's on the Skype chat on the Wednesday workout. I'm, I'm going to get to it, Joe, man. I'm not going to be able to give you the 50 because my hand's still not all the way. Ah! I'll give you what I can give you. you feel he me? can't I'm do gonna, 50. I'm actually going to try. <laughs> hey, bro, Alex is... That's cool. Hey, out, guns out right now. He you can't do 50. Up, Yo, Mario busts that I'll shit out. I'll be trying, man. I'll be trying to keep active with, with the injury. You know, you know Ness tried to take me out and shit. Injury. He's right. still claiming injury, my Gotta man. Take me out, hey Israel, shit. he ducked you. Is he, is, yo, he ruined the fight. Is try to take me out with a fucking hook, a right hook. Yeah, chronic hey, being a coach. Joe, hey, what you me, predicting? Amir Khan, what? Ryan Garcia. Uh, Amir Khan, Ryan, uh, Amir Khan, right at this moment, probably Amir Khan. Damn, hey, Mario I, just gave you the salute. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. Hey, Write that down. I'm beside with Mario Rice for once, crumb. right? <laughs> oh, good shit. Uh, shout out to you, Mario, man. I'm glad you did your shit, man. But I want to say to anybody listening, man, you don't have to be have to do 50. If you can do 10, do 10. If you do 20, do 20. It ain't a competition. It's just, you know, something for everybody to Keep yourself uh, uh, motivated and stress relieved, you know, with a little workout, man, while we all at home. And uh, shout That's out to everybody job. that uh, going through this. Uh, many people are affected different ways. People are laid off. Some people no family members that have it. Prayers in the air for all of y'all. Uh, but far as Billy, Billy Ho Saunders, the dude, man, for him to point at somebody and say they got coronavirus on the plane, man, it, it, on top of hitting the bag, uh, talking about hitting a woman. The, the, the dude is a corny, moron, immature fool. And just like a kid, you got to put him on punishment. I'm glad he didn't get the fight. And as um, far as Mikey, uh, great, great move. He should go down to 140. And I got to ask y'all a question. If Wilder and AJ were to fight today, knowing that they both got clipped in their last fight, what would the bet odds be in Vegas? And uh, I take my answer off the air brother thanks for the show y'all doing a great job peace Ooh, oh what peace. the betting guys would be like i, I, I think i think the bro. plus wow there wow would be on the good side you think so it's a tough one yeah I mean, not because we already know that aj got you know he can get clipped he can get clipped bro ruiz can't let us get know. clipped I think the clippy. ballers, though, the ballers that would in influence the fight would be going with AJ. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying I think like the more the ballers would be picking AJ. Why? Because Wilder, Wilder got beat worse. 
I, I think it comes down more to like notoriety and popularity a lot of times with betting. Like the people that influence the bets, like the people that bet the most, like they're not the people that really know the most. You know what I mean? Vegas knows how to open odds, but the people that in, you know the that control the influx, you know, a lot of them bet just you know because they heard a name and stuff. And some of these guys got cash to spin like that. So I don't know. I could be wrong, but I think it's AJ. Who got beat worse though, AJ or Wilder? AJ. Uh, AJ. Hey. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I'd say Wilder. AJ actually. was yo. AJ was, was more competitive. With Wilder, though. it was shocking. Well, it was shocking with both, but I don't know. I just we had seen that first fight, and we hadn't seen nothing like that. So to me, it was just it was more shocking, I guess. But it's a close call. It's tough. To, it's tough to call. That's why I said, man, I shouldn't even say nothing. <laughs> And Wilder just gotta make this comeback, man. Cause like we 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 gonna we gonna measure the champ by by how he comes back. So like you know he AJ AJ really got rocked plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? Obviously Wilder, you know he he got the white towel thrown in, man. And uh, um for for your corner to throw that towel, you gotta be taking an ass whooping. So uh, I think I think Wilder might have just gotten beat up, but I believe that he got beat up by a better fighter. And, I, and, and, you know, and I don't and I don't put uh, Fury past Andy uh, um, in skills too much. It's just that obviously Tyson Fury has the physical attributes that that put him ahead of Andy. You know what I mean? The, the size, the length and all that other stuff. But, yeah. All right. Trey in the Bay Boomerang. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the. Um <clears throat> that fight y'all was talking about earlier out of the three, the pick three. Uh, I was with you, Mario, on the Wilder AJ. But the shit you said after, I was like, oh, he would take it to that level. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? I said it was a battle oh. for number two. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. It was something else in there, man. That shit was so long ago. So much else been said. I can't even remember on a dime like that. I feel you, uh, I feel you on that. Uh Shit, it was something else, man. I can't even remember right now, man. Y'all be good. Shit, I, I said it, and I can't remember. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you threw me off, too, because I had something else, too. Shit, I done forgot, oh, man. Oh, my bad. My bad. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Well, uh, we, that's my call, y'all. We had call, plenty of topics. So we had the Hearn, Billy Saunders, you know, losing Canelo fight. You had the Ryan Garcia with Tank Davis. Should it be $80 she, pay-per-view? Yeah, she broke that down. Oh, right? yeah, nah. That's not... Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, I think that fight happen. should happen, though. I mean... Take my clip, Ryan. Ryan, keep that goddamn chin in the air, man. He he, he may get a mere con. That motherfucker better <laughs> learn how to tuck that chin. <laughs> All right, that's my call, y'all. You know what? She made a good point. Yo, he stands really tall when he fights, man. He stands really tall. Uh, he's been able to get these fast flash knockouts on these guys that are kind of like, you know, a little above the bar level. So, well, uh, I mean, the same know, dude yeah. he knocked out, you know, Tank struggle with slightly. Yeah, uh, how long ago was that though? You know what I'm saying? Different fight at different time. Uh, well, I don't know. This is boxing, so any shot you can get clipped. So true, true, true. Well, on that note, oh Mario, we got one. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so, uh, so yeah, yo, man. They uh, got me. They got me like r- slacking like right at the wrong time. So that is Josue from Oregon. Uh, Lower Oregon. What up? <laughs> yo, yo. What up? What up? What up, Ness? Hey, yo. What up, Mario? What up, uh, Doomsday? What up? Uh, uh, what's, Mar- what's his name? Uh, Enrique Church over there. Hey, yo, uh, I was listening to the the last one of the, the untitles, and uh, you know it was funny uh, that, that real quick story that uh, what's his name uh, Doomsday was talking about that uh, even at home he listens to uh, Musica Mexicano, and I you know I want to give him respects for that man, and uh, you know <laughs> you know show your love for that bro because that, that's awesome bro because you know you out there being in the East Coast you know you showing love for the Mexicanos bro even though you sound Mexican dude I, you know I got to give it to you but. Uh, you know, other than that, uh, hopefully boxing gets restored within uh, the summer. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, Viva Boxing Voice and Viva Mexico. Yo, and, and that's because we did coming. like a really, really dope grito uh, in Dallas. Yeah, we were all time. hanging out. I was like, whoa, where did that come from, bro? Nah, like, listen, it was dope. 
Yeah, I appreciate the homie saying that, you know, it's, it's para la cultura, loco, you know, no hay que olvidarse de la, la de donde venimos y entendemos que hay que representar y, bueno, la música es parte de la, de la historia, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, big up to you too, bro. And, and it represents us all, like, Why really well, no matter what like it is, Canelo. like, bachata, merengue, tejano, like, you no, know what I'm saying? That, like, TV, that TVV in Espanol is coming through, man, champs, you know, we always got a full schedule on for you guys, but we're going to make room for that slot real soon, man. I've been working my Duolingo, so I'm already on level five. I just started it last week. Vaya, hay que prepararse, loco, como Goku, Super Saiyan. Yo, and then... <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you off air. Never mind. Anyway, uh, I mean, not to say anyway, but we got another one in Oregon and it's looking like. Uh, oh, wow. These or Well, that, that'll that be easy. King Born. All right. King Born, what up? Listen, I'm going to put it like this, right? Uh, um, Billy Joe ain't smart. I don't know how you can mess the bag up. <laughs> With Canelo and everything. I love the interview with um, David Benavides. That's going to be a good fight because you're going to have a box of. You're going to have somebody that hit hard. And we know Sweet Hand Plants, you know, he he nice. He got skills and everything. But I got one thing I want to say. Let's, let's think of this. Who would win? Riddle me this. Who would win between Lomachenko and Prince Nassim Hamed at 130? Who you think would win? Loma. I think it would be um, Loma. Nah, nah, Prince. <laughs> Remember, Prince, Prince was little. He had that knockout power. You know that. He was that, chinny as you know hell. It. He was chinny as hell, and he wasn't nowhere near as accurate as Loma. But the thing is, but the thing is, though, he remember he knocked out Kevin Kelly. Bro, he, he was, he was also sloppy. He was all over the place, man. No way. I'll never take that. He was so untraditional that it was scary. Hey, and I'm going to tell you something, too. Uh, Ryan Garcia, he got to mature. He's 21. He got time. But he, you like you said, how you going to pay somebody to get on that platform $80 and everything and, and make money for that? promotion company but you need javanta javanta gonna sleep him anyway everybody know that <laughs> shit i don't believe that no more anyway. i thought wilder was gonna sleep fury nah that wilder just had a bad night and everything but javanta can have a bad the, night the uk guys listen just for the uk guys i give tyson fury all respect we know aj's a punk when he fight, when he fight somebody, and I, you know, we saw the fight with Andy Ruiz. He looked scared in there and all that. You know what I mean? So we know what. I give Charles Martin. I think Charles Martin would, would be um, would be AJ. Which I Bro, think, they fought already. If he's motivated, they gotta fight again. <laughs> they gotta fight again, guys. You know what I mean? But like I said, that's my call. Yeah, have a good night. All right, all right. Yeah. Too, champ. Yeah, nah, AJ fought Charles Martin, man. Um, he got him out King of there. Gave him a bath. Got him out of there. Where is Bond? I'm really liking that wild the AJ yo, fantasy matchup, yo, though. Yo, 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 yo. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why uh -oh. so serious? Nest GTO Instagram and Twitter. Peace. At Mario McGee on Instagram and Twitter. Peace. And IG Alex underscore Doomsday underscore L A I N E Z. Twitter Alex on his TVV. Peace. See y'all in the morning, 9 a.m. We Catch got, yo, we double book, man. We got Virgil Ortiz. We Ooh. got, we gonna have to, we gonna have to Ooh. do somebody dirty. What's the young with? gunner? Yo, what's messing with? I rescheduled uh, Granados. Oh, Granados, that's right. I just saw that. I seen that right I now. I rescheduled him. So he he slid in right. But I finally got Joseph Adorno from Top Rank. Oh, that's my team. And and, 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 and Yo, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, as soon as I, I scheduled him on the time slot, I get hit back with the Virgil. Like, yo, we a go for Virgil Friday. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yo, uh, let's get off air because I, I need to ask you about one of the guests. All right, peace. Peace.